Nice. Okay. Um, I am actually going to be playing Josh Thunder. He is, and I will be playing the playbook of the Hex. Um, his character is somewhere in his mid twenties, uh, like just a college student. Um, he's got, um, he's kind of tallish. Uh, he's got some angry eyes proper, just kind of closed, but they're very burned in this situation. Like they're just raggedy, dirty clothes. Um, and torn up in in the situation that we're currently in he's very very much into some gruesome violence he's got some some issues with his past um and the fact that he has lost his entire team excellent he is the only one left of his uh of his hunter hunter group long times I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Um, Beatrix. My name is Brianna, but yeah, my right. character's name is Beatrix. She goes by Trix because she doesn't very much so like being called her full name because it was the name her father gave her, but she killed her dad. So uh. she doesn't really like to be reminded of her father's for said reasons. Um, <laughs> she has dark eyes and she wears more nerdy type clothing she has guilt from killing her dad and mood swings and hallucinations that usually brings her back to the time of said incident she doesn't have a very good relationship with her mother since you know she killed her husband and uh yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> so it looks like you are the only one who made it through the portal on uh, your team as well mm. that'll be fun it is an incident for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Um, let's go, Thomas, and then we'll go uh, to Tiana. Okay, my character's name is Carson Witkowski. He's the flake. Um, man, uh, he's got searching eyes, he's got a rumpled suit. Um, he has a history with Charlemagne, who will be introduced in a, in a minute. Um, Kind of works in a consulting capacity um, on his team. Typically, that's how that has typically gone down. Um, and I, he, he grabbed onto the uh, sword as it went through the portal, so I got hurt a little bit on the way through the portal. <laughs> and I will describe that in just a moment. Excellent. So Tiana, why don't you go ahead and introduce your uh, character briefly. So my character is Charlemagne. Um, she's pretty, pretty bossy is what I think I developed over <laughs> our four hours yesterday. Um, very determined, uh, just in general. There's Her mind is set to take care of whatever's before her, and she does. Um, she's dressed pretty cool. How did I describe it? A uh, little bit of um, steampunk with uh, Conan the Barbarian, Red Sonia, um, and some Star Wars tossed in, uh, Han Solo specifically. <clears throat> so, and she's, so she's dressed pretty cool. For, she's ready for battle. Um, she works for an agency. The, we refer to it as the agency. So I've got a lot of resources available to me. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see if those resources exist where we are right now. So it'll be exciting. Um, Char Charlemagne and Carson have an interesting connection. I, I had to reprimand him at one point long ago when he was, a he was learning and, and, but that was the only time. And since then it's been a pretty tight relationship as far as he's been a, you know, reliable consultant and, um, and it looks like, and we were the only two of the three who made it through our group. Our previous one, uh, Lucas, which, which I think we're going to miss quite a bit, he stayed back because he wanted to make sure he, the uh, remaining survivors of the incident that happened um, were taken care of, which was pretty amazing. That just, just That's just like Lucas. Right. So, but Carson and I, we have a long history. Yeah. Okay, excellent. So... All of you jumped through a portal of bluish purple energy into an unknown. Now, 
Carson, of course, being Carson, grabbed this mystical sword that emerged from a zombie pigman and was dragged through the portal. <laughs> so I'm just going to uh, read a little bit that I wrote up this morning. Um, as you each emerge from your respective portals, the bluish purple light fades into monochromatic grays of a desolate landscape. A luminescent sword and skull escape into the horrorscape, followed quickly by a small sprite and a willowy spirit glowing with green light. Um, nothing looks familiar as you stare into the distance. Off to what you assume might be the north is a city skyline. Um, to what would then be the east is a body of water large enough you can't see the other side. Um, Flatland stretched to what you assume is the south, and what looks like a forest is off to your west. Um, when you finish making this circuit, you find yourself suddenly face to face with Charles Tiggs. Charles Tiggs being the old guy who gave you your first job that led you here. <laughs> um, so just to recap, Tiggs is a slender guy who looks and even smells like an old dude. I mean, he's got that slight old man funk going for him <laughs> um, or against him as the case may be. <laughs> um, and he smiles a nice crap eating grin, says, well, thanks for your efforts. Uh, some of you did better than others. And he glares over at Josh. <laughs> so I look at him and go, who the hell are you? Because my Charles Tiggs did not look in any way like this. Oh, really? Indeed. <laughs> uh, fun times. So uh, then he will look like whatever he looked like to you. <laughs> in your instance. All right. Um, and he says, now, as you've probably guessed, there's more to this than, you, uh, than I initially told you. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> So, you have more work to do. I will answer any questions, but it is up to you to do what you need to do here. Oh, and by the mean way, the humanity is at stake. <laughs> What's at stake? Oh, just, you know, the lives of everybody on Earth. Oh, and, I mean, you know, your not? lives. Uh, what do you mean everybody on Earth? Where, where the hell are we? Oh, uh, well, <laughs> you guys, you, uh, you happen to find yourselves in, well, I'm just going to call it the alternate world. Uh, it's a world that exists outside of the normal rules that you're used to. Um, you can use normal, you know, your, your usual physics, but the rules here are different. I don't really care about the rules, so you'll just kind of have to figure it out as you go. Now, here's the thing. What you're facing is a dark god. You can't beat him, but you can stop his plot. Basically, he's just trying to kill everybody on Earth. He lost a bet, and he doesn't have the souls to pay. So he needs to kill everybody on Earth to, to pay up. Wait. So where we where do we find this god? Is he here or it here? Well, he's around. He's not going to bother himself with puny mortals like you. You'll have to deal with his minions first. How are you involved? <laughs> oh, me? Um, are you a minion? No, no. Um, here's the thing. Uh, Edo, who is the the Stark god, he's a djinn. Long story, generally neutral in the whole galactic scale of things. I happen to be a seraph. Gener I, I like to think I'm on the side of humanity and on doing good stuff. Well, edo has been gambling with human souls for millennia now. And lately he's been getting in over his head. So I got in on his game. And I kind of made it so that he bet more than he could pay. So now he's in his, over his head. He's set up a plot to try to pay me off and rather than, you know, becoming one of those genies you hear about. 
really, it's more complicated than that. But the long and short of it is, he owes me a ton of souls. I don't want him to be able to pay. If he defaults on that loan, I get to claim all the souls. It's a sweet deal for me. Nobody dies, so it's a sweet deal for you. And Edo's out of the game. Wait, how do you get the souls if nobody dies? Like, I mean, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> okay, see, you're playing from a mortal's perspective. When you've been around since the creation of the universe, the rules become a lot more clear. Basically, you know that whole trope in your human movies where you save somebody's life and they owe you forever? Turns out, it's kind of a bit how it works, is if doing what I do saves all of you people, unless you consciously sell your soul to somebody else, I get it. I'm sorry to be rude, but I am highly confused. I was in Argentina like a few seconds ago and <laughs> my friends, I jumped through some weird sludge. Now I'm here, I don't know what's going on. I was a penguin for a few hours. I'm very confused. <laughs> Everything is confusing. I don't know who you are. I don't know what this area is. <laughs> what the heck is going on? These are new people to me. I don't know who these people are. I'm very confused, sir. Can you just like break it down like I'm a five-year-old <laughs> and I just woke up from like a really good nap. I just need, I need some help here. I forget how far beneath me you mortals are. That's so kind. <laughs> and he's, he's so condescending. It's really smug and ju you just want to punch him in his face. But you kind of get the sense that that would do nothing but tick him off. Most likely. So he'll, uh, he'll say, all right. And he points to each of you in turn. Carson Wachowski, Charlemagne, these two were sent to go kill a zombie pigman and stop the demon of war. They ended up in, what was it, Siberia? It's the northernmost yeah. city of Russia. Yeah. Right. Closest yeah. to the North Pole. <laughs> mm -hmm. Part of this ritual that he's doing requires, you know, components and magical spells to be cast at the North Pole, the South Pole, and a point on the East and West equators. Well, where those are up to debate. But needless to say, he got those rituals completed. So, you two killed the pig dude. Good for you. I didn't, I don't know, because he said a thing that made me nervous, but continue. He, he did you say he succeeded. Dude, but you freed yeah. the demon of war. Now the demon of war is coming here to finish a ritual that will, uh, well, quite frankly, kill everybody in, on Earth. Now, there's also uh, the factor of Trix's team. Now, that you guys did a great job. You tracked down a necromancer with a death cult. I mean, good stuff. Great for movies. You defeated him by, oddly enough, turning into a penguin. Never saw that one coming. Gotta tell you. A plus for creativity. <laughs> I want to hear about that. But... <laughs> but you lost the rest of your team in the process. That is true. <laughs> oh, by the way, she's real damaged. So, you know, go easy on her. <laughs> now, you freed the spirit, the demon of death. And he's going off that way, and he points across the lake. And he's going to complete his part of the ritual to, you know, kill all of humanity. For this gin guy. You know, here, simple. Big bad guy. Long beard. You know, if he gets trapped in a lamp, you can wish three wishes, yada, yada, yada. That, that's the bad guy. He has demons working for him. And you, Josh, you failed to stop. I mean, come on. How hard is it to bring a flamethrower to the party? and burn this lady. I am the flamethrower of the party. It doesn't help that I get knocked out on the way. <laughs> Fine, yeah, you're right. I did assign you that job because I knew you could light her on fire, but no, you just didn't do it. <laughs> now he was in the Amazon, tracking down this lady. You know that uh, ant fungus that creates zombie ants? Turns out this uh, Sylvan, he went off that way, by the way, and he points to the forest. <laughs> Decided, oh, it'd be cool if we mutated that to make it so it would work on humans. And then shot it up into the air to make it airborne. 
Well, Josh didn't stop that. So now that virus, now that fungus is spreading all across the globe, just ready to make plant zombies. And then of course, the team I hired for the job uh, going from India, let me just tell you, that was a disaster. They all died miserably. That, and when you saw it, you saw a tiny little eight inch sprite fly off. And he says, to the grasslands right over there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that is a garbage sprite. I mean, she's eight inches tall. How hard is it to kill a stinking garbage sprite? <laughs> she's going to make it so that the entire world starves. So basically, here's what you got to do. You got to kill at least two of those demons of the apocalypse. You know, you've got war, you've got pestilence, you've got famine. You got to kill two, at least two of them. If you do that, Edo can't collect, uh, get enough souls to pay me. And I win. And humanity wins. So what questions do you have? I'm sure you guys are brimming with questions. It's Let's make sure. So we know about the Sylvan that went to the forest. The Sprite yep. went to the grasslands. Uh-huh. Who is the, who's uh, got the demon of famine? The yes, Sylvan famine. has the demon of pestilence. So we have to fight again the god of war if we, oh. if we so choose to go that direction, even though we just yeah. fought in Russia. Well, you, you fought his physical embodiment. Now you've got to fight the actual demon. It'll be much more fun. I Trust me. Do we know which way he went? The demon of war went toward the city. Okay, city. Now, I know this is confusing. Please just bear with me and uh, ask questions. This Take Charles, is Charles to Wine. To answer questions. What's that? Charles Wine. If anyone would be able to no, figure Charles that out, it'd be Carson. Up front about this. He has no reason to lie to you right now. Right now. He's not telling you everything because he's waiting for you to ask him some things. Right, so what's being concealed here? Let's start with that. Can I roll for that? Yeah, yeah, go that for it. I shouldn't. I don't have a good sharp. <laughs> I mean, I can roll it. Do, do you want to do that? We yeah. should, you know, before we do anything, how are you two doing? Uh, what's your damage? <laughs> Trix and Carson. <laughs> I have two damage. I'm quite shaken up from the whole situation that just currently happened. Um, Reasonably so. Yeah, it was a lot. Yeah, um, I'm running. I, I'm running. I think my telepathy's on the fritz. Okay. So. I'm one wound away from being unstable. And and. Arm. Josh, you're unstable. You say. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with all you people? I'm gonna have to carry all of you. It was a wild time. You know, I burned I down half the stuff. Amazon, okay? <laughs> I wanted a sword. He want, it was for him it was all curiosity. Otherwise he would have been fine. <laughs> I had people who they like to BS their way through situations and mm -hmm. I had to mask their BS with my actual powers. So it was interesting. Okay. So, okay, we're going to probably need to address that, but I guess let's figure out what we want to do first, and we'll see how we can help you guys. I rolled a 12, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Okay. So, you can tell that he is, basically, he doesn't want you to know that he doesn't believe that you can actually defeat this dark djinn. He's just hoping that you can get far enough to foil the plan so that he wins the bet. You know, this seems like a, it seems like you made a, this whole plot seems very odd. If you hadn't made this bet, it seems like none of this would be happening. Mm -hmm. Well, you're right. Yeah, yeah, this seems like a little bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy there, buddy. <laughs> just, okay. Let me break it down a little bit more. So, here's the thing. Being immortals... Edo, who's, that's the name of the djinn, and I, we tend to think of uh, your lives. I mean, what, you live, what, 60, 70 years now? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, I mean, 
the fact that you measure your lives in rotations around the sun is a little bit preposterous. <laughs> but basically, you're nothing to us. So those who are less principled than myself like to gamble with souls. Now, wait, I know you're thinking, wait, didn't you gamble for our souls? Yes, I did. Just hold off. <laughs> Edo has been gambling for souls for millennia. And the thing is, those four beasties I sent you after, they've been on Earth doing this guy's work for years. Before the zombie pig dude you guys killed, he had another guy who had the, the demon of uh, war inside him. I mean, basically, he has been causing mayhem and death across the earth for hundreds and thousands of years because it makes it so that he has currency to spend. So really, what I'm doing now is I precipitated a crisis for him. I made it so he had to cash in all his chips at once, and he can no longer gamble with your lives. So, so just out of curiosity, what are you going to do with all of these souls? Oh, uh, I can help you with information, but if I actually get involved, uh, uh, that, you're involved, that negates man. the wager. And, you know, that, that makes it so that I can't win. He, def he doesn't default on his wager. So all this was really for nothing. <laughs> hey, but what are you planning to, what are you planning to do with the souls when you win? Or if you win? Well, isn't saving all of humanity enough? I mean, are we really saved, though? I'm yeah, a I didn't, I didn't like ask a lot that. Of I, asked, I asked what your plan was <laughs> yeah. if you win. I let you all live out your miserable existences in the best way you possibly can. I give you back the ability to have the time to make choices, to live. But that's After all you're going to do? Those souls, I mean, you weren't going to use them anyway. I mean, they'd go to one, one kind of deity or another. Why not hang out with me? You still haven't really answered the question. No, he has not. You can try to <laughs> manipulate him into answering the question, any of you. <laughs> or you can just do an investigate. You can, I mean, any right. kind of a... Uh, we could read a bad situation too. I mean, yeah, you this, it's could. not like this was a you know, great I, thing. I, no, I, rolled I, I, I rolled a nine to manipulate. Ooh. Ooh, okay. The, okay, if it'll get See. you off my back, the number of souls you have in your possession relates to your standing in the celestial rankings. I mean, the fact eight billion souls, that's a good chunk of change. It puts me pretty high in the rankings. Right now, I'm sitting at like, you know, 1,300. That would bump me into the top 10 in like one you go. Can the system as it is, not, not try and win within the system. But here's the thing. It's better for me to have him than for, you know, than for Edo, this gin to have him, right? I mean, he's just going to gamble you away. Okay. I feel like it seems like both of you have like a really bad gambling problem and I'm going <laughs> to need you guys to figure that out because it's There's... not fun for us. Yeah. Okay. This is the first game I've been in for, uh, I don't know, eight, nine thousand years. Mm. Isn't that like in, in the terms of a god like last weekend? Yeah, like nothing. Like, I haven't gambled yeah. in like three days. Well, I mean, sure. Hey, do you have any references? <laughs> Anybody we can yeah. talk to to vouch for you? Okay, you don't want me calling Gabriel in here. <laughs> I mean, why not? <laughs> I mean, I, I kind of do. <laughs> yeah, I really do. Yeah, you, you know, if you're gonna gonna be you're gonna be pulling out name dro name drops there, buddy. How about you you bring out everybody, huh? Does one what of you? It? How are you guys on your sharp? Because I think we need to read a bad situation. I could try to use my telepathy. Oh, yeah. with that, that's with my sharp so i can try to see if i can read more into whatever oh yeah absolutely please do that putting he is giving yeah us. And i can just read a bad situation just straight yeah, let's, let's let brianna uh, take that role yeah. real quick sure 
I rolled a nine plus one would be a 10. Oh, that's perfect. So I can freeform it or you can ask me three questions from the list of read a bad situation. Do you have that in front of you? Yes, I do. Let me just find it on this paper. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Hmm. You know what? I just want you to free ball it because none of these questions seem like they're going to help us with this current situation. That works for me. So I'll give you three pieces of information that are going to be helpful to you. Please. First of all, he is absolutely being self-serving in this. You guys, your instincts are spot on with that, and he will not lift a finger to help you. However, he is also being upfront, and you get the sense that he is getting less and less patient. And when a god gets impatient with you, that's not a good sign. <laughs> Um, so that's the first little bit. The second piece is that, uh, when you're looking at things, you realize that as bad as the demons of war and of death were, they no longer have their physical host, which gives them a lot more power. You know that if you are going to chase after somebody, you should probably chase after the physical embodiments of famine and pestilence because they have plots still on earth that could uh, be set off if you don't chase them down. And finally, each one of these spirits, uh, these demons, has the potential to kill 25% of the earth's population. And so the faster you work, the more opportunity you will have to stop the horrors that are coming. All right, then I sort of feel like we just need to choose a direction to go, but maybe read that and see. Um, you know, I'll give you, I'll give you one more way. piece of information because I don't okay. think that I focused on it enough during Charles's introduction. In the alternate world, there are different rules. Yeah. You can figure out what those rules are, and there's a special move that I have that I will uh, tell you about. Um, it is called an unlock an alternate world move. Basically, I have a list of several moves that you can use, or you can create your own. Um, essentially, normal rules don't apply. You can find something. If you need a piece of equipment, you need to go somewhere. You can figure out a way to do that. Will has power. So, sorry, Tiana, you were saying. Uh, I was just saying we should just get moving, choose a direction. Um, that being said, it might help to uh, investigate or read a bad situation to get a good idea of how to move forward into whichever direction we want to go. I know which way I want to go. I want to go after the bastards who killed the rest of my group. Which one was yours? That was the Sylvan. So pestilence. Is that the fairy? Uh, that was the uh, the tree spirit. Yeah. Okay. One of the ones so that still has the, the physical. Forest. One of the ones that still has the physical embodiment. Yep. We should go after that for sure. Let's do it. I think it's fifth, either way. We have to go after them, so just we need to choose one. <laughs> Let's go, with Josh. You said that one that way into the forest. Yep, in the Fine. forest. And I just start marching that way. <laughs> okay, it is a long ways away. I mean, it's going to take hours and hours to get there. I'm not a smart man. I think man. we should. I <laughs> mean, rules don't apply. Yeah, can we like fly or something? Okay. Charles says, I won't take you there. I mean, and you see him blink out of existence. He comes back with a branch. He says, like I said, the rules don't apply. You want to fly there? Fly there. You want to Go there, go there. Figure it out. <laughs> You're, you guys are supposed to be the best at what you do. Clearly you are. You made it here. <laughs> okay, so basically to do this role, uh, to figure out an alternate world move, you have to figure out what it is you want to do. So first state what you want it to be able to figure out how to do. Then you can roll plus sharp, plus cool, or plus weird. Any of those three will work. 
if you get a seven through nine, you know what you want to do is possible, but you don't know the uh, mechanisms and what the consequences for failure might be. On a 10 plus, you can either create your own move, um, which is then available for the entire party, or you can uh, I can just open up one of the suggested alternate world moves for you. Should, should we just try and figure out how to teleport directly to, to the spirit? That's what I was thinking too, like teleport yeah. to that area. Yeah, okay. we can teleport straight to that thing. That whole, that spirit just totally decimated my entire group. I had uh, what was supposed to be the chosen one. It totally disembodied her. So who wants to roll? I'll, I can roll, plus cool. Okay. <laughs> it's a five. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead and mark an experience. Okay. <laughs> um, so you're sitting there considering, and it, it's almost like you enter a meditative state trying to concentrate so hard on teleporting directly to this, this uh, Sylvan's and you splinch yourself. So in Harry Potter terms, half of you is over here, the other no. half of you is over here, and they're about 10 yards apart. Ouch. <laughs> now you're still alive, both parts of you still function, but- no, I'm like divided. Yeah, you're divided. <laughs> it didn't just... actually do any harm, it's just now you have to figure out how to put yourself back together. I have two parts. <laughs> like. I just see this and go, uh, oh God, this is like Harry Potter. <laughs> and I, like, do you mind if I grab, I'm going to grab your legs. Is that okay? Yeah, go ahead. All right. <laughs> I just, oh God. Oh, stop moving okay. your leg. Stop it's it. Okay. It doesn't hurt. I'm ticklish though. Careful, man. <laughs> and I just kind of drag it over. Like, okay, okay, okay. This is, this is totally like, like, just like what, um, you know, David Copperfield crap. Um, <laughs> and I grab my jacket and I just like put it over her, right? It's her, right? Charlemagne? Mm -hmm. Okay. So over her, like, okay. And, and I just like scrunch out my face and kazam? <laughs> and I do the same thing. Okay. You going plus weird this yeah, time? Yeah, plus, uh, plus weird, yeah. Okay. That would be... A seven. Okay. <laughs> so you're just concentrating super hard and you're focusing all your mystical energy from being the hex. And you think she's put back together. And she is. You have no idea how you did it. <laughs> Ultimately. Nice. But she's put together and uh, any harm that uh that charlemagne suffered has been healed up to this point so <laughs> that's too bad because i have yet to be damaged <laughs> oh. but you guys are over there bleeding so, to death <laughs> Josh, are you a medic? Uh, yeah really i'm a medic and, and, and then he I, doesn't so. how to repeat but he could certainly uh so i just hold Know that it can reverse spell effects and uh, cure harm. But you don't know what, like what you roll plus, like you could roll plus weird. It could be plus cool. You don't know yet. <laughs> All right then. Okay. There is, a, like you can heal somebody somehow. Nice. Well, obviously there has to be at least a little bit of a physical component to this. There is. <laughs> So I want to try what Charlemagne tried, and okay. hopefully we can teleport, hopefully. This hopefully more successful. Yes, hopefully. Like all at once, instead of piece actually, by piece. Actually do it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to roll my weird. Uh, I don't think I mentioned I'm the spooky. I forgot to say that. Oh, wow. I rolled well again. I'm quite surprised. So I rolled a 10 plus 2. I rolled 12. Oh, that's excellent. Mm -hmm. We can do the thing. It, hopefully, oh. it's excellent. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. And it's like, oh, you teleported. Psych. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> so, just to be clear, are you 
teleporting directly to your target or are you teleporting to the forest? To the forest. I don't think, well, do you guys want to teleport directly to the target and just kind of pop up on Here's, the dude? But yeah, I'm nervous about that again because you're yeah. all injured. Let's you know. just say in the forest. Okay. Like, can we, like in the area of where he might possibly like, be, but maybe not. Maybe where we can see him. Yeah, maybe. but not right beside him. All right. Because that'll be bad. So you have unlocked an alternate world move. I'm just calling it Blink. You can refer to it however you want in your thing. Basically, you can move to any location you can see. Oh. Um, you roll plus weird. Seven to nine, you arrive near your location. But that location opens up you up to a danger you didn't intend. On a 10 plus, you arrive exactly where you intended and are safe from harm for the time being. <laughs> okay, so the four, uh, the four of you blink out of existence and pop back into existence right on the outskirts of the forest. So, um, from a distance, the forest didn't look like anything more than an oddly out of place forest of beautifully green trees in this monochromatic wasteland. As you're looking in, sunlight, sunlight glimmers off the dew wet foliage and butterflies flit through the pleasant yellow light. Then a tree shifts a branch and the ivy growing up one of the trunks uh, writhes to find a place with better shade. You do not immediately see this, Sylvan. However, because you are trying to get to a place where you could see her. You know that she is somewhere within line of sight, at least at the point when you teleport. So I'd like to read a bad situation. Yeah. Okay. It'd be a seven. <laughs> Excellent. Do you want me to freeform it or do you want to ask a question? Uh, I would like to ask, are there any dangers we have not noticed? <laughs> okay. So because I described it, you know that the trees and underbrush, <laughs> all of the growth in this forest are at least somewhat aware of what's happening around them. And they will try to reach out and grab you. Um, Additionally, what you didn't notice earlier, and that your, uh, your supernatural senses will tell you, is that this is a powerfully magical place, and not just because the trees are, and plants are more aware of you than on Earth. There are powerful magics that, if you're not careful, will lure you to, into a false sense of security. Listen here, buddy. Like I did not come to this alternate world to be sucked into the lost woods. <laughs> I'm going to do an investigative uh, mystery to... No. Got a nine. Um, I'd like to know what can hurt the Sylvan. Okay. So this is actually something that you... Uh, the way I'm going to kind of couch this is as you're sitting there thinking, oh man, so we're going up against a tree spirit. That's not good. So you feel, think, well, Josh has faced this thing before. I mean, sure he failed, but. <laughs> so you ask Josh, hey Josh, what will hurt this thing? <laughs> so, Straight up fire is the last time it, it actually took any hurt, but it's it's quick. It had, yeah. it had help a lot, the entire forest. <laughs> so it was it's on fire. its side. And then uh, what you can also know from your uh, experience, well, okay, not your experience, but your research, you never got a chance to try it, are that um, uh, herbicides might also work. You guys didn't bother since you had a guy who could just fling fire out of his hands. You didn't bother trying the herbicides, but those might also work. <laughs> Um, I want to try to use magic so I can try to communicate with these plants to hopefully Ooh. make them not try to kill us while we're here. So they can kind of be like on our side. So like if anything, we can try to use the plants to try to get the little weird dude. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Go for it. Oh my goodness. I feel 
I'm very surprised. I wow. Okay, so I rolled a twelve again. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know okay. how I keep on doing it. But yeah, I have a plus two for weird, so I rolled 12. So, yay. All right. Nice. So, as you're sitting there, you're sending your thoughts out to the forest, and you're getting thoughts back. And essentially what it comes down to is, oh, you're cool. You're talking to us. We like that. We haven't had somebody to talk to in a while. And you don't seem like you're the type to hurt forest. However, that other guy... We, we sent smoke and char around him. We don't like fire. Don't bring him anywhere near us, please. So like, we have to either no, mask yeah, Josh's yeah, like, smell no. and or fix his situation. Yeah, basically. Great, great, great. <laughs> fire is a threat to the, the plants of the forest, and they are not willing to deal with it. Okay. So they will attack Josh if he comes in, but the rest of you, for now, are safe from direct attacks from the forest. So, that Trix, do you think you could ask them what we could do to show them they can trust us? Yeah, I'm a, I want to try to figure out how we can, like, so they trust the three of us. They just don't trust Josh because he smells so much like smoke. Right, so maybe we can vouch for him. Um, how about, I'd like to have a word with him first because he's a anything little pissed. Done. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. All right, I am. I'm going to ch change my nature. I'm going to change who I am. You're not just going to change your smell. I was about to say, you want some perfume, <laughs> some cologne? Right. Some my concern is, spray. Josh is a fake. little, he's they a little irrational him. right now. I'm a little nervous about that we can trust him to not put us in danger. They're plants and animals. They know the truth. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta keep in my mind somebody. Who can I be? Who can I be? <laughs> oh, he's going forward, apparently. I got it. Like, I got it. I got it. I'm changing myself. Head. They'll be fine. No, I'm changing myself. I got what is it, babe? Weird. So that'd be a nine. A nine. Okay. This the spell is not an, a simple thing. <laughs> so you do manage to change yourself. It, and the problem is, it's not really. It's it's a cosmetic change more than anything. <laughs> um. So what were you thinking of? as a character that you wanted to change yourself into. Elvis. Elvis? <laughs> They're going to say something like Jane Goodall or something. I said Elvis. <laughs> so the problem is you look like Elvis would if he got old and and fat still and died on the toilet. <laughs> like if he got real old and but still insisted on wearing the white uh the white suits. <laughs> and uh, that illusion will fade the minute you do another piece of magic. Okay. But it will work for the time being. You just look ridiculous. And you stand out. <laughs> so have the plants realized that he's different or do they still like sense that it's him? They are fooled. Like they're very skeptical. Let's put it that way. Okay. They're willing to give him the benefit of the doubt for now. Okay. I don't know Josh that well, so I can't. All I don't right. want to be like, oh yeah, he's chill, and have him burn down the entire <laughs> forest, and then have all plants everywhere hate me for the rest of my life. So I just look. I just look over. I just look over. Like, did that work? <laughs> yes, it uh -huh. worked. Yeah, it did. But um, we're gonna need you to keep yourself in check. This is something we should have discussed before you took action like that. <laughs> You could have put us all in danger. Well, did not recognize me. Let's go. <laughs> and I start marching into the forest. Josh taking the lead. Oh, <laughs> the rest of you guys do. I don't know. I want to try to keep on trying to encourage the plants that we're not going to harm it. But if Josh goes rogue, I will tell the plants I'm not with him. Right? Yeah, we have no relationship. I'm telling the plants that if Josh does something like 
insane. The three of us, we might, we don't, we don't really know him that well. So like, we don't vouch for him completely, just okay. partially. I could, I could try to manipulate Josh to calm down. That's good. <laughs> so, wow. my whole take with player versus player moves or moves on other players is the other player has to be willing to allow that to work on them. Robert, how are you feeling about that? Mm. Right now, no. <laughs> okay. All right. So he is immovable right now in his okay. uh, <laughs> determination to be reckless. So we have to decide whether, I mean, we're here, we're looking for the same thing, but do right. we want to follow him or do we want to let him be his own crazy self on his own? I don't trust him. I think he's putting us in danger, but I wouldn't mind keeping my eye on him. Yeah, because, like, literally his whole team's dead. Like, my team isn't dead. They're just not with us. Yeah, Same you just here. lost them. They're not lost. Yeah, they're not lost. His team is yeah. – they gone. So, that <laughs> makes me question what did exactly happen there to make mm-hmm. them all the, the not alive. Exactly. The hell went down. All right. They're all and on the alive. on the flip side, that's pretty traumatic. So also, it makes sense another, that he's freaking out. Another facet is this just needs to happen anyway. We need to. We need to do it. Kill this, we need to kill this dryad. Mm-hmm. I feel like we should follow him, but just keep a good distance so that if he doesn't anything <laughs> stupid right off the bat, we're like, oh no! And we can <laughs> good, <laughs> good idea. <laughs> Let's so do it. Know, I'm with you, Trent. The forest is super old Elvis. Just, just remember, you don't have to be the fastest one. You just have to be faster than the slowest guy. Yeah. Right, right. And right now, that's me. Because <laughs> you're at the very front. So if we all turn real quick, it'll take a little bit longer. <laughs> Josh has given me some strong vibes from one of the people that was on my team, Don, who just did stuff. And I was like, mm. <laughs> those are things that are being done. Mm. <laughs> good thoughts happy thoughts we're okay we're fine that elvis guy up there not so sure yet yes i'm sending all elvis. of these thoughts to the plants <laughs> <laughs> okay you guys get into the forest a little bit and let's see let me just okay you so- are can I, would it be well, I, I probably won't be able to succeed at this, but I, it was mentioned that herbicides can harm this thing as well. Would it be possible for us to conjure some herbicide out of if, nothing? We're going to want to be careful, though, because these plants already are not trusting not us. So they see us walking around with herbicides. I have not some. I'm not oh, necessarily saying do it right now. Oh yeah, but. I think you're onto something for down the road. Yeah, I have some weird plants that one of my teammates gave me in like a suit. I'm I still am not 100 percent sure of what this plant does. All I know is that it burns red and sends people to like a euphoric area when it's lit. Ooh. can this help like i don't want to mm, never mind i was gonna say we could probably use it on the spirit but that also might trigger something bad because the dude that we just fought used it to gain power so i retract that statement <laughs> <laughs> so she's sitting there muse tricks is musing about you know i've got this really good stuff here that oh wait never mind that's a bad idea it gave necromancer powers Ooh, yeah let's okay never mind <laughs> yeah we're not gonna use that stuff we're, we're not gonna try to to drug the the sylvan with this it might just make her good thinking tricks <laughs> okay, okay so we're follow. we're walking into the forest and we knew here's the thing we knew that the sylvan was in our line of sight do we know that we're walking toward it or we just start going randomly into the forest well, if you're I, following Josh. Hey, yeah, I Josh, did you see there. something? Well, well, when we all blinked, we did. I, uh, is that what you said? I saw something out of the corner of my eye that just kind of went. You, you saw the forest move. You didn't oh, see saw the forest move. Okay. 
Yeah, I just started going in because <laughs> I know that the Sylvan's in there. Okay. So I want anyone who is not overly confident in themselves to read a bad situation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's all of us? Except for I me. Can. I mean, you can decide. Your, your character is yours. You can decide how, he, how they are feeling. I'm just saying, it sounds like Josh is feeling a little bit overconfident at this point. <laughs> Did anybody roll higher than a seven? I got a ten. No. So if you rolled lower than seven, go ahead and mark an experience. No, I rolled a seven, so that oh, I'm good. Perfect. So I get, I have all my experiences. Oh, yeah. So you uh, basically you'll erase all of your experience, choose uh -huh. one improvement, and you get to be better at things now. Woo. Basically, you failed enough that you've learned some, uh, some stuff from this. It took school. me a while to start failing, so I'm, I'm cool with this. Where the heck... So, uh, Thomas, what'd you end up getting? 10. 10? Nice. Okay, so I'm going to start off with uh, the small little things that both of you notice. <laughs> um, both Trix and Carson, as they're following behind, they've got their eyes on opposite sides of the forest, and you see something moving more quickly than the trees around you. Just a glimpse, but it's coming from the, your flank. Carson, as he focuses more, stares into the forest and looks above him, and he sees a uh, he sees the Sylvan there. Her name is Taime, and she is a uh, basically she looks like a tall, slender woman with dark, bark-like skin. Um, she is exceptionally pretty at least partially because of her supernatural origins. Um, ivy and leaves make up her hair. Um, but when you look and see her eyes, it is just chilling. She hates you. And she, she, so she's she's behind us. Trap. So she's behind us. She is she's above playing. and behind, yeah. I'm, I'm going to alert Charlemagne and tricks to this. <laughs> Not Josh. <laughs> He's still probably walking. He's like, <laughs> yep. I'm yeah, like, exactly. I'm kind of stomping through the forest, kind of because I'm trying to get her attention. Mm -hmm. It's working. Uh, <laughs> all the bads, all of the bads. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just get Charlemagne and Trix's um, attention and, and point out that we're being followed. Okay, can I try to get the plants to like stop whoever that is? Um, you can certainly try to keep them. I'm going to tell you right now, it is going to be a difficult sell for them. Noise, noise, noise. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Hmm. I don't want to try to do that then, because I don't want to try to screw up and have these plants end up attacking us. Yeah, turn on Because they already don't trust us because a certain person who looks like Elvis. <laughs> So I'm gonna I'm gonna take a stop, and, and now that we I walked in a couple hundred you know feet, uh -huh. and just kind of take a look around. Um, I I don't feel anything other than the forest, right? That, that, that it hasn't taken any kind of any action against me. No, nope, it's way. taken no action against you. Um, you do feel uneasy with right. it. Now that I, now the, if there is an unease, then I will read a bad situation. Yeah. <clears throat> that would be a uh, seven. Okay. You get the distinct feeling that the forest is ready to strike at you at a moment's notice. And there's something deeper than that, but you can't quite place it. Okay. All right, I turn around and look at, <laughs> look at everyone else. Notice that they're all like 100 <laughs> feet back. They're not right behind me. No. What, what the hell? <laughs> I guess you're going to see us looking. Yeah. We're all looking at the threat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're all looking. I, I thought you weren't looking at it yet. No, because uh, Carson told us that he could oh, see what okay. he saw. So oh, we were okay. looking. It's like, what the hell? And then I look up as well. <laughs> okay. When you look up, you also see 
uh, the Sylvan. And at that point, she will pounce. Um, okay, well, in this case, I can um, act under, let's see, what is it? I can, well, I can act under pressure. I, you all will get a chance to act under pressure unless you want to take a different action. So is she pouncing at one specific person? She is big enough that she can knock all four of you to the ground in one go. Now, she's okay. not, like, big enough that she can hold you all down. It's more just a, because she's coming from above, it's a splay eagle, you know, just knock you all flat. Can I try to roll for blink to get out of the area? Yeah, you can absolutely do Good that. Good idea. Okay. What do I roll for under blink again? I'm sorry. It is plus weird. Okay. Oh, okay. I rolled a five plus two weird. So I rolled a seven. Okay. So I didn't die. <laughs> no, you didn't die. However, it does put you right in the path of danger. Nice, 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 nice. So blink away. She doesn't knock you down. But when she lands, you will be standing right in front of her. So you blinked just back like five steps. <laughs> Um, so I feel like I think this might be defend. I, okay, you help help me figure out whether this is act under pressure or protect someone. I want to dive at tricks, and essentially knocking both of us out of the way. But I want to knock her out of the path of so she's not just right in front of the Sylvan. Okay, uh, I would call that a protect someone. Yeah. Okay. God, I need different dice today. <laughs> they were great last night. So that would be, let me just make sure I didn't have something extra. That'd be a seven. A seven? Yeah. Okay. So you dive and you grab her right around the knees. <laughs> nice. And she's like, ah. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, you are now hugging Trix's knees as the Sylvan is pouncing right in front of both of you. So. <laughs> That's so awkward. <laughs> <laughs> so now here's the thing uh tricks might have been startled and stumbled backward now she's not going to stumble anywhere she's firmly rooted in place <laughs> by charlemagne <laughs> so with the seven though where i can't find seven. the part uh you protect them okay but you'll suffer some or all of the harm they were going to get Right, so my goal was to just kind of knock her, because if it's going to land right in front of her, I wanted to, like, knock her um, okay, do you want from to the direct path. Down, or do oh. you want to to just keep her from... Oh, we were probably both going to hit the ground, but it was going to be gorgeous, because we were going to do this cool roll. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so you, instead of it being, you know, this, this beautiful, like, cinematic event, you grab her around the knees, and the, her knees bend, and she just falls on top of you. <laughs> Okay. But you managed to roll slightly down a slope so that you're further away from the silver. Okay. That for you guys? That, sound, that seems fair. Awesome. If I'm not getting hit, then yeah, that's great. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it doesn't hurt either of you. It's more just an awkward tumble. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whatever keeps me alive. Exactly. I'm fine with it. Not dead. <laughs> okay. Uh, what's Josh going to do? So, um, so I from my from my previous adventure with this thing, I uh -huh. pull out my silver knife. Okay. That I, and if it's okay with you to continue with this, I had initially, it's just a little silver knife. I'm not as crazy as everyone thinks. I still have it, and I still had uh, conjured it with some, some herbicide on it. Hopefully, it still has some on it. And I'm just okay. going to... Just going to launch myself at it a bit. <laughs> get in front of, get in front of these two. <laughs> okay, go ahead and kick some ass. <laughs> Let's see what happens here. I would be an eleven. An eleven. Okay. Well, um, so you're going to inflict harm. Uh, your herbicide will hurt it some, but not as much as you were hoping. So it will take one harm from it. Um, oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, it will. Okay. Um, on a 10 plus, you get to choose an extra effect. 
uh, I'm going to force them where I want them to be. Ah, okay. So I'm going to essentially what it's they're the kind of the face, everything, right. I can see the face. I'm going to kind of rip it across the cheek where it's just going to, ah, and just, it's, you know, going to land right next to everybody <laughs> and kind of. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so you and your fighting rage run up, slash it in its cheek. It deflects it just enough that it, uh, is no longer going to threaten anybody else on the ground. However, Carson was not aware of this when you started jumping forward. So what does Carson do? I am going to act under pressure, trying to okay. get out of the way. Just dive out of the way. I think it works. Oh, I got a three. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So go ahead and mark an experience. And you were not anticipating Josh's move. I haven't anticipated anything Josh has done this entire session. <laughs> and yet, I rock. <laughs> so, instead of stepping in the direction that is away from the Sylvan, you step toward the Sylvan. <laughs> and so it still doesn't hit you because, you know, Josh managed to deflect it just enough. But you are staring it down as it lands on its side, skidding through the, uh, the leafy underbrush. And it stares daggers at you. You can tell that if you don't do something, it will come at you hard. Does it come after Carson or come after me? Carson. Okay. I... Look this person. I would like to draw the attention back toward us. It's laying on the ground, right? But it's staring daggers at Carson. Yep. It is going to spring up any second now. I, I want to get its attention. Okay. Charlemagne, I can do, roll Jinx and hopefully like make it when it's try if it does try to attack any of us, something will coincidentally happen that may harm the Sylvan instead of any of us. Yeah, I'll go for it. Cool. Is that That's fun with you? Super cool. Okay, I, I just don't want to try to have it attack us and we're like, ah, because I feel like <laughs> I would do something. <laughs> yeah, I just want to distract it so it doesn't actually attack Carson so oh, you should probably do that first though so. yeah I was do thinking because then if it's off if it's distracted maybe what you want to do will be great It'll make it to. work better so that would be um protect someone I would think okay much better I got an eight okay so um you will deflect its attention from uh from Carson Basically, you just chucked like a, a branch at its head or something. I don't know. You you decide how you handle like, that. I like call it a bad name, and it <laughs> hurts its feelings. Hey, language. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's exactly what I did. I just hurt its feelings. It was shocked that I would say something like that. No one speaks to this. <sighs> From your professional right. background, you've studied Sylvans, and you actually know the perfect of the thing right now. I do. I know exactly what to say. <laughs> okay, so Trix is uh, jinxing it. Yes, let's hope I do not do bad. Oh my goodness. Great, I rolled a 12. So, <laughs> it works. Dice, you have such <laughs> good I dice. I don't know, I keep on rolling 10s continuously. <laughs> hey. I don't know how. Take it, I mean, that, that's awesome. This okay, Monopoly so dice are rigged, so. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Okay, so you... You're sitting there uh, on your side beside Charlemagne as she just shouts out this horrible insult. I mean, you don't get it. I mean, it's not really all that insulting if somebody called you that, but for a Sylvan, that is just about the worst thing you can say. <laughs> and you, Ooh, you said the Sylvan word. <laughs> <laughs> and it just, it hits the Sylvan right in her knobbly face. <laughs> And she is just ticked. <laughs> um, but the problem is, she can't seem to get up. She's sitting there scrabbling as, but it, it's like the ground is greased. So she's making her way toward you. It's just, she has no control. It, she's just sliding as she's trying to get to, uh, get to you two. To really put the hurt on you. Uh, I see this happening, and I just, I, I, again, in my fat Elvis, really skin-tight body, 
run at is this thing, hoping to knock it back even more. Uh, at the same time, I yell at everyone to run. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, what oh, move it's are you oily call? thing. You're probably going to burn things, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, we need to run. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna listen to Josh. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm yeah. So I, I'm I'm running at this thing. I'm running and chucking at my chucking it at myself and and just kind of jump on it. Kind of totally do the whole like you know kind of grab onto it. Cause how big is this thing? It's 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 like eight feet tall. I mean it's it's thin and willowy whatnot, but I mean it's not short. Okay. Um, so I just kind of you know grab onto it. You know, I have and if for the ones that don't know what a hex. Uh, can do they have essentially rotes which are specific magic that have to be done um, and one of the ones that I have is is a, a symbol that's on my hand and I will that requires certain things like blood that I'm currently unstable on so I spit it into my hand I take one more harm um, and you hear me say something, something magical, and I roll weird. Okay, I'm assuming the rest of you are just running for your lives. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Charlemagne? I don't know. I mean, I'm moving, but I'm also not just gonna leave. Okay, so you're making a measured retreat. <laughs> yes, because I, I'm not just gonna run away and he's dead behind us. And that's true. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a great. Great thing. So I, I leave no one behind. <laughs> yes. So go ahead and make your magic roll there, uh, Robert. That would be a seven. Okay. <laughs> so essentially, I wrap wrap around um, here. I spit in my palm, and I you know say some magic words, and I say go to hell, <sighs> and a magic fire just like spits out like a huge dragon's flame. Uh, right all over this thing, but it also backlashes on me, and I take two more harm. So you're a uh, your dragon fire. I mean, it, this uh, soul this... is on fire. Yeah. However, you're holding something that's on fire. <laughs> it's that's my own cool. fire. I fall off. <laughs> and by the way, you're no longer Elvis. <laughs> yes, I do. I do know this. <laughs> Dang, these plants are going to hate us. <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to need to try to blink again. But I also, how much harm do you have now, Josh? I am down to my last one. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's I good. am going to, I don't know if this is the right time, but I almost think I need to. I need to give you some kind of quick first aid. At the very least, throw some burn cream on you. Like, just toss it at you. So, so I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to help you out. You know, alternatively, Josh could have used luck to not take that harm. Oh, I'm, I'm out of luck. Oh, all right. For the love of... <laughs> hey, hold on. Yeah, I'm done with luck. I, I am, I am fate's, I'm a, I'm fate's bitch, like, completely. <laughs> okay, so, nine. I got a nine. Okay. Um. <laughs> and then, so for mine, um, seven to nine, I can heal to or stabilize the injury. Um, so I think I'll I'll heal too. All right. Okay. <laughs> like okay. you 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 jump up in front and you go. Whew. Yep. Because <laughs> the rules are different. Yeah. The rules are it different different just rains on you. Yep. <laughs> okay. Oh. So you splash some burn ointment on him. It covers up some of the burns, so it's not hurting as bad, at least. <laughs> It's not like sinking into the bone. Yeah. yeah. It arrests the progress. Okay, in the meantime, what are Trix and uh, Carson doing? Uh, I guess I'm going to stop running away frantically Look when I see guy. Charlemagne <laughs> doing her I'm a heal you stuff. Oh. Oh, God. I'm questioning everything, though. Everything. <laughs> I'm going to try to contact the plants, though, because I'm pretty sure they're pissed. 
oh yeah they're totally angry right now yeah just the the over shot of that uh flamethrower blast it, it didn't stay contained no dragon fire is uncontrollable <laughs> so um I mean, not that it's necessarily my turn, but I could read a bad situation. I have new, my sharp, I don't have to use my sharp anymore. Oh. Yeah. So I could read this. We can figure out how to get the hell out of here. Well, let's, uh, let's hear what Carson's going to do real quick, and then we'll get to that. Okay. Well, has the, has, has the Sylvan been defeated? No, the Sylvan is on fire, but still screaming angry. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't. I don't know what I can do. I don't have. I don't have fire. I don't have herbicide. On her back. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm gonna. Now you can do the move to uh, unlock a new alternate world move. You can try to conjure something out of thin air. Yeah, I was thinking. Remember that herbicide rain you wanted to do. Or how about, well, I was going to say fire rain, but that seems the worst. I would hurt everybody. It's already, and it's already burning, you know? Yeah. Let's, yeah, let's try and uh, conjure some herbicide right above this thing. Uh, like oh, a cloud of it? Like, the, can we, yeah, let's keep it concentrated. I, I yeah, don't want the yeah I'm going to keep it as concentrated me. as I can above this thing. So what are you rolling plus? Sharp. Sharp, okay. Yeah, roll a nine. Okay. And so, I would like to roll to protect the vegetation around the Sylvan. Oh, okay. What are you gonna roll? Uh, it's plus stuff, so it's protect someone. Oh, okay. Um, so, okay, so you're not trying to use the properties of this alternate world. You're just trying to prevent it from splashing onto the trees and stuff around. Right, and I suppose I could go magic, but that would be dangerous. Like, I feel like I want to protect them, and so what I would like is for that stuff not to hit those plants. Okay, yeah. yeah. So that um, could be, for it could be one of the alternate rules. It's, I guess this is where you are benevolent game warden. I will allow either way. If you roll high enough, I'll say that you protect the major growth. I mean, they'll still hit the underbrush. There's, unless you use an alternate book alternate world move there's not much i can do to okay. prevent that but <laughs> okay let's do this yeah 12 to protect the trees or to create an alternate world move oh alternate world move okay Sorry. using which uh attribute what was that using which uh oh what attribute? were the three that you could choose from it was dark cool or weird it was cool okay well then so carson you see him as he's thinking, and in your head you're going over chemical compounds, and you assemble, no, this is an herbicide, and all of a sudden it's just there in a mass that falls on top of the sylvan, putting out all the fire that's on Josh and on the sylvan and the surrounding uh, brush, except <laughs> uh, it, it does put all that out and it splashes up on the trees, but Charlemagne focuses in and as soon as it touches anything that's not the sylvan, it just turns into water. <laughs> nice. And so rather than hurting any of the vegetation, it actually cools and refreshes where the burning was. So while they're still really ticked off at Josh and they are going to try to hurt you, <laughs> they're cool with the rest of you for now. <laughs> nice. Sweet. And it dealt another... Uh, two harm to the sylvan because of herbicide. So what is that, like five harm so far? Uh, Should be six. Yeah, six. Seven. Oh, seven. Yeah, yeah, you're right. One, two. Yeah, still have a few left, though. I mean, it's it's a tough creature. <laughs> okay. Should I, try that move? Should I try that move again? Now, you don't know how to repeat it. You just know that you could I do <laughs> Um, so in the, in the meantime, like, I, I just got splashed with all this water, right? Like, oh, yeah. but I'm still underneath the Sylvan. You're 
I, I was thinking of you like writing its back. <laughs> oh, I'm still. Oh, I was on this back. I thought I let go. All right, well, that's fine. I'm I'm writing its back. I, and and that's cool. I got you know I got my friggin' knife, and I'm just gonna stab it right in the side of its temple. <laughs> Oh. I mean, if you've seen any movie where there's a person and a monster, isn't this yeah. what you do? Yeah, exactly. You go, <laughs> 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 or get it in the eye or something. And I'm just, just <laughs> rolled, <laughs> roll it plus tough. That'd be a seven. Okay. Unfortunately, the uh, the cascade of water washed the herbicide off of your knife. Damn it! <laughs> but you distract it long enough that it does not hurt you. <laughs> However, you uh, the forest reaches out and grabs you with vines, and you are now off the Sylvan's back. Uh, you're about uh, two meters away, but it, it has wrapped you up against the trunk of a tree. If the Sylvan decides to come after you, you are a sitting duck. <laughs> it's okay, I got other things in my repertoire. <laughs> I I I ain't no I ain't no uh ain't no spell slinger. <laughs> I ain't no spooky. So um I guess I'd like to read a bad situation. Yeah. Yeah, fine. oh my dice are my friends now. Uh so I got a twelve. Okay. Do you want to ask any of the questions or do you want me to free form it? Well, I think the first is just what's the best way to protect the victim being Josh? Okay. The best way to protect him is to get the, uh, the Sylvan to focus on you guys and then to use an alternate world move like he did to heal that harm. Okay. You know your first aid is not going to be enough to stabilize him. <laughs> then uh, what's the most vulnerable? Because I have three, right? Yeah, you have three. Yeah, so what's the vul most vulnerable to us right now? It okay. Uh, because of the burning and the pesticides, or the not pesticides, herbicides, Taime is distracted. And if you get any good shot, you could deal the rest of the damage in one go. But it needs to be a good shot. And again, fire and herbicides are the way to go. So if you can get, like, if you can, like, open her mouth and pour her herbicides in, that'll kill her right off the bat. Um, you know, just if you can get to the core of where she, where her power is and decimate it, that'll, uh, that'll end it. Okay. And then, well, then I guess the third question, I don't know, I've never done the free form portion. I always just stick with the interpretation oh. of the existing questions. That works. So for, uh, for the free form, um, you know that it will take all three of you just diving in to make this happen. Um, and it will not go easy for you. <laughs> you okay. Rest. If only I wasn't tied up, I could help. Well, um, I, I'm assuming I still have my weapons. They came with me. Yep. I don't know if they'll work here, but I, have, I do have a shotgun. I also have a rifle and a big knife. So I can use one of those, but I feel like, what do you guys want to do with me? What should we do together? I wanted to know if the Sylvan, like, is it susceptible to big creature bites, like an insect bite? Will that cause harm? Um... Generally, no. However, if you want to do some investigate and try to figure out what species of tree the sylvan is from and fight, figure out which insects are uh, detrimental to that kind of tree, I'll allow it. I want to do that because there's a specific thing I very much so want to try. <laughs> okay, so what will I roll for that? Well, is it in... It would be a... Uh, it would be investigate, so it's a plus sharp. Okay. So you're trying to find, figure out the genus of this tree, and mm -hmm. to go back back through your botany classes you took in college and say, okay, now, what pest did they say was really bad for those trees? 
Because the thing I want to do is is holding on to this. Okay, so I rolled a seven plus one. It would be eight. Okay. Well, you don't know exactly the type of tree, but you have a suspicion okay. that this certain type of mite really wreaks havoc on these trees. Okay. Do you know anything about that, Mike? No, you just remember seeing a picture in your textbook once. Um, I do <laughs> have I'm an educator, so I could probably help you with that. Ooh, can I, can I like describe the mite to Charlemagne and she can exactly tell me what the mite was? Yeah, we'll get to that in just a moment. Let's see what, uh, <laughs> what's Carson up to while Trix is studying trees and Charlemagne is looking at her guns, deciding which one to use. Right. <laughs> Both of them. Uh, you're muted. <laughs> um, it's a good question. Carson is not tough. Um, <laughs> yes, magic! Fire! Try to try magic. magic. You, anyone can use magic. I Any was trying to think, it. like, if I fire my gun and instead of it firing, like, shot, fire his little flame balls. I w you know, how much I wish I had the grenade launcher right now. <laughs> Change the shot to, to fire butterflies that are on fire. Why, <laughs> why not just use an alternate world uh, move and shoot fireballs out of my hand? You can do that. Yeah. I'm going to try that. <laughs> okay, I, I would call that one a plus weird. You're trying to do magic here. Yeah, so yeah, for sure. I, that's understood. I got a 10. Oh, okay. So you're sitting there focusing and fireballs, just a stream of tiny little balls of fire shoot out and hit the Sylvan, each dealing some damage. However, it's not the one decisive blow that you were hoping it would be. Sure. That's fine. That's hurting it. Yeah, it, it's, it's back on fire again. And because they were such small concentrated little bundles of fire, the rest of the forest isn't on fire yet. However, you can also feel that it's hostile toward you. Because <laughs> you're doing fire stuff. <laughs> it doesn't lack fire stuff. Didn't I tell you that? Like fire stuff. Okay, so uh, what is Josh doing right now? I mean, yes, you're- Right you're, now, struggling. I'm still- <laughs> You can try to rip free if you want, or you can just let it go and just- <laughs> Um, I mean, I have my big knife. I might be able to cut yeah. you free. I don't know where I am in relation to where Josh is. Uh, you're, you're I mean, cinematically, I'm assuming I'm in like up, up, up high enough that you're going to have to like climb up the tree a bit. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit, not too high. I mean, he's probably three, four feet off the ground. So I mean, I think, uh, I think what I'm going to do is I, I, there, I have, I have trained in some fire magic. It's it, again, it's kind of a will based system. Um, and there is a thing that I've learned where I could kind of concussively burn things off of myself. Okay. And I'm going to try to do that using like weird. Um, okay. There is a, there is a thing though with the hex just for everyone knows it's called bad luck charm. Whenever I use magic and miss the backlash never affects me directly. If there's someone around else around to hit, it'll go for allies, other hunters and innocent bystanders. Sometimes every so often it might hit an enemy. <laughs> So, that would be a seven. Okay. So, uh, based on that move, what happens to you? Um, so, it, let's see. I would imagine it... Works as, it, as I intend, but it glitches. I think... I am released for the most part, but now I'm hanging upside down because it didn't release the ones that were on my, my legs. Okay, I, I'm totally with that. Okay, <laughs> so as you guys are watching, you see Josh struggling and then all of a sudden a concussive blast that just kind of singes all of the foliage around him, bursts around his torso, but then he flips over face down and so his face is at the base of the tree, <laughs> right in the root system. <laughs> Feet are still suspended above him. And he's sitting there spitting out leaves and dirt. <laughs> I still okay. see this as a win. 
Felix and Charlemagne, you you guys were discussing uh, mites that live in trees. Yes, we were. Where'd you? What you guys gonna? What were you? You were wanting to release the mites and have them just kind of eat up the tree, no. or conjure some. I I wanted to to get the spirit of these said mites. To, so I have the power of said might to <gasps> attack her. You're I, right. Okay, we figured out the might. I would think. Should I? Do I have to roll something for this? Uh, roll a plus sharp to to say. No. No, what might you're talking about? I got that. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> it is a nine. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because that's a minus one sharp. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh god. <laughs> I was holding on to this. Charlemagne is not terribly intelligent. She's very smart. She's very but she's not like book smart. <laughs> good at reading things right away, which is funny because she is. She's both those things at the same time. It's very weird. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I don't understand her at all. Hey, that works. But, no, no, that is the mic. That is, and and while you're sitting there spouting off the the right name of this this mic and describing it so that Trix can you know summon that spirit of the mic, um, you get distracted and the uh, the Sylvan uh, s just spits something on you. And as you look, it looks like it's this weird greenish moss. And you feel it starting starting to climb into your pores and seep into you. Ew. So make a note that you have uh, one degree of zombie fungus. Okay. How am I going to mark that? <laughs> you That's just make lovely. a quick note. I've got one here for you as well. So. Okay. Um, until you reach third degree of zombie fungus, you're not, you know, technically really in trouble. <laughs> but if you do, reach I, that uh, level, do, do you I are see under control? Do I see that this happened? Uh, no, your face is still in the dirt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but did I hear that? That's what. That, that's what happened. Yes. Yes. You. You okay. hear the. So I you hear, hear the sound that took over so much of your team. Yep, I did hear that, and I just I. Just, from my location there, I start freaking out, like, <laughs> and I just do everything trying to get and start hacking at that vine, and I say no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Trix, okay. you now you you know this this might down to its very spirit. What are you gonna do? Okay, I'm gonna roll use magic, so I get plus okay. two for my weird, so I can try to summon the spirit of this said might. Okay. So I rolled a seven plus two, so I got nine. Okay, using uh, magic, that. Okay. So you get to choose a, uh, a glitch. The effect is the Sylvan is scared of you now. Yeah, yeah. It recognizes, hold on, that's bad for me. I, uh, but what kind of a glitch do you uh, want? I'm going to choose the, the, hmm. it has a problematic side effect. Okay. You now have mite head. Oh, so now my head is in the shape of a mite? Yep. <laughs> I was thinking no. like ant lice. <laughs> we, have to, we have to, oh, we just dealt with a pig-headed man. Mm -hmm, I know, this is I'm all sorry, nightmares. guys. It was either that or other things. <laughs> now that does make you extra terrifying. Yeah. I mean, have you seen the mites? What they they're, look like? Of course, they're it, gross. It's horrifying. <laughs> so you now have mite head, and this Sylvan is going to stay away from you, <laughs> if it, if at all possible. <laughs> Meanwhile, what's Carson doing? Uh, I think he's gonna try to shoot another fireball. <laughs> okay. One's not going to go as well. I got a five. <laughs> okay, Mark, an experience. Hey, I just leveled up. <laughs> All right. 
So your fireball, again, they shoot out of your palm in like a quick succession of five fireballs, and the Sylvan manages to dodge just in time. The fireballs strike the trunk of the tree that Josh is tied up on, starting that tree on fire, burning his, uh, his binding, so he is now on the ground, loose and r ready to go. Um, well, you know, except for, you know, having been dropped on your head just now, um, <laughs> as it goes. But you free him, but the forest now is thinking, uh-oh, uh, we've got two guys that we gotta hurt now. <laughs> so uh, the next time you fail a test, the forest will be attacking you. Okay. <laughs> All right, a, Josh. Any, any, te any test or a fire test? A test in the forest. Okay. So any um, test in the forest. So the uh, Sylvan right now is, where's her attention at? Uh, right now, uh, one eye is firmly on tricks. And the other is on Charlemagne because she hasn't, uh, the, she hasn't, uh, the Sylvan, she has not realized that you have gotten loose yet. Okay. And Carson missed, so <laughs> not a current threat. Um, I'm going to um, get up behind the Sylvan and cast, cast essentially just one giant fireball. I'm not going to be able to, my hand is burned. And I'm going to have to heal that up before I can do what I did before. But I still can do more magic. And, um, and you do a cast, you know, use magic. Okay. Ooh, and that would be a five. Go ahead and mark an experience. Yep. And that goes bad for people around me. Yes, yes, it does. Um, you so there's, no, there's no one really around me except for her. Yeah, except the issue is that everyone is around you. So you're sitting there and you're focusing this fire beam and your hands just go out and it sets the entire clearing on fire. Every time uh, you guys take a, uh, an action that's in this, um, this same clearing that you're in right now, if you do not get a 10 or more, you will take one harm from the fire burning on the, in the undergrowth. <laughs> so you can choose to leave the place, leave the clearing, and be okay. Or you can stick around and take a harm. Josh is actually standing in a relatively clear spot. <laughs> yeah, he's in the center. Yeah. <laughs> So just what? one harm? Just one harm, but that's for each time you take an action while you're in the clearing. Okay, well, I'll stay right now. Okay. I want to stay since I just literally turned into a mite and to have a mite head. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to get my job done. Do your, do your job, Trix. Let's see what you do. Yoinks. I want to try to attack. Okay. Since it's already very terrified of me. I yes, want, it is. I want to do it. <laughs> so how are you going to attack? Like any normal might would, just going for it. Just okay. nom, 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 nom. I'm a nom. <laughs> nom, nom, nom. Nom, 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 nom. All right. Nom away. Okay, do I roll tough? Plus tough. Um, essentially, this attack will deal a lot of damage if you hit. Okay, let's hope it does. <laughs> I rolled an 11 plus one for tough, so I rolled a 12. <laughs> nice. I knew all of the nomming. <laughs> it's so delicious. It's barbecued at this point. Exactly. It's Seasoned with herbicide. And you That's just perfect. munch on this thing. First you grab its arm, and you gnaw its arm off, and then you just like, ooh. Sylvan head, and you chomp on its face until it's gone. I want you to heal uh, two harm. Yay! I'm no and, longer hurt. <laughs> and the Sylvan, um, out of the uh, burning corpse of the Sylvan, rises the demon of pestilence. 
Um, it's a, it glows in uh, hues of blue and purple. It looks like a medieval plague mask. It says, you may have killed my host. You may have foiled her plans, but you won't stop Edo and his uh, destruction of humanity. Okay. And he is going to uh, flee this clearing. Okay, let's blink out before we let's, all get burned. They pick let's up not. a stick and just like chuck it at him. <laughs> <laughs> just to throw a little bit of, you know, more <laughs> anger at it. Perfect. Perfect. What's left, le what's left on the ground of that, the, whatever that was? Just like a it burned is, body or... Yeah, it is basically like, a smoldering... It, it basically looks like a fallen tree, except oddly anthropomorphic. So you just kick it? <laughs> yes, I, that's what I do. I look, I find the head... You're gonna burn yourself, jackass! Whatever the head version of it is, and I just like stomp on it like... like you I know. ate its head. Yeah, yeah, there's no head left. Uh, whatever, the, the yeah, neck part. Num, 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 num. Just... Uh, <laughs> And I start walking out the forest, or well, whatever's left of the clearing. This is the second forest that I burned down in the worlds. <laughs> so, how bad's the fire in this forest? Uh, it is now starting to spread through the trees. So, I can't, I don't know why I have to ask you this every time. When we do the, any kind of magic thing, what are the three that we roll? I mean, what are our, or not magic, but. Um, the world moves, yeah. Sharp, cool, sharp, weird. Cool or weird. Okay, so help out. Yes, cool. I would just like to see, except it is kind of magic too. I'd like to find a way to make it rain or something to or to kill the fire so we're not just leaving the forest on fire. Okay, yeah, I'm good with that. So will cool be okay? It's help out, but... Uh, yeah, I, and the thing is these alternate world moves don't need to fit into the the strict guidelines of the right. Order. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So they are because I use, this place, I, use I use sharp to summon some herbicide. I guess. Her, yeah. Her. Oh yeah, it's true, huh? Yeah. Because this is a world where your will has more power than just about anything else. As long as you can will it into happening, it can. Have you ever okay. read the David Eddings books? Because that's what magic is in those. Anyway, okay, nine. I got a nine. Nine. Yeah. Okay. You're able to put out the fires. Um, unfortunately, it does not heal the forest. It is so angry, and it is going to whip all of you until you leave the forest. So, yeah, not enough we to earned actually, that. like deal harm, but it hurts. <laughs> I I when I was walking off from the from the get go, and I I don't care, and I didn't feel I felt it, but didn't react. I just started walking. All right. Um, as soon as you guys exit the forest, the plague mask is waiting for you. Like just the mask? The demon like of it's... pestilence. It is a oh. floating plague mask. Like in the Middle Ages, it's that bird mask yeah. thing. Um, and it's, uh, it's going to... All of you start having a racking cough. What was that? A racking cough. Okay. So it's from deep in your chest. It hurts every time you cough. Uh, so this is a minus one for, for your physical tests until pestilence is defeated. So that's going to be tough um, or anything that's relating to, you know, endurance, any, anything you want to do with relation to those. Okay. So, I mean, as we're leaving the forest, though, I don't think we should just go back to where we came. We know that the sprite went to the grasslands. So I kind of feel like we need to be going that direction. Yep. However, you are confronted directly by the demon of pestilence. Like, oh, it's confronting us. It's not just like hanging yes. out there on the edge waiting for no, us. It is, it is actively in your way. I mean, in the first one, I'm like, of course, get up to it. And I just, now I'm on my knees, just 
hacking up whatever the hell's in my lungs, which is a lot of smoke and, well, smoke. Yeah, <laughs> lots of smoke. Uh, I'm going to re... Well, let's see. So is this, is this the demon that Trix's team fought? No. No, this, no. Is the, this is the demon that just came out of Taime, who you defeated. Oh, okay. So it's essentially disembodied now. Yes. Yeah. So it's stronger. No, it's weaker. Yeah. Oh, it's weaker? I've, oh, okay. Probably someone needs to investigate. Yeah, I was going to do an investigate. It. Yeah. Uh, an 11. Ooh. Lovely. Logically, you're sitting there thinking, well, how do you, this is a demon of disease. How do you kill diseases? Well, you wash your hands with soap and water. <laughs> you use, you know, uh, disinfectants. You, I mean, all of these things are how you defeat diseases. Why wouldn't they work against a demon of disease? Vitamins. Let's throw some vitamins. vitamins at. Can I inject it with some um, bleach? <laughs> or maybe get some light straight up in there? <laughs> <laughs> that would that work? I should definitely I'm conjure. I'm gonna conjure a, 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 a ultraviolet <laughs> UVC light, <laughs> which will kill it. <laughs> it will kill us. <laughs> uh, Thomas, is that what Carson's gonna do? Is he gonna try to inject some bleach or some light directly into this thing? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is an alternate world move. You're conjuring something. Um, I'm going to say it's still plus sharp, given that you're trying to uh, use the logical deductions you just made. <laughs> Bleach. Uh, I, just, I, just, I just rolled a 13. <laughs> no. We you knew it! All all the bleach. All the bleach. It was the truth! <laughs> <laughs> oh, they Great were right. Above your head. And bring them down, and as you bring them down, there's a giant bottle of bleach with a gold <laughs> needle. Stab <laughs> into the face mask, and you squeeze the bottle. <laughs> and as you do, bleach just starts spilling out of the eyes and out of the beak. And it's going, oh! <laughs> This is fantastic. <laughs> than a harm. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh. That was excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I'll inject you with bleach next time. See how it feels. <laughs> oh, <that's> so rude. <laughs> nice job. So what is all of the rest of your reactions when you see Carson <laughs> raise his hands with nothing in them and then all of a sudden come down with a giant bottle of bleach that he just pumps into this mask. I think that we are going to laugh hysterically because we recognize the social reference. Yes. <laughs> just, Utterly. <laughs> We're I, I, just like, well, and laughter is the best medicine. So yeah, we, yeah I, I say we all take off one harm because we're in a world where that works. They you know heal what? our inner souls, our inner beings. We're healed. All of from you this. get a plus, like you get to remove that minus one forward. You're you're no longer coughing because you're too busy laughing. All the fear from this guy has been dissipated. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that was such the best defeat ever. How really was you just use social justice and believe it? <laughs> now he's still around, still alive, definitely weakened. So what's okay. the next move, you guys? So is he still there, or did he run off? He's still there. Oh, it's but it's just, just like hacking up, like bleach coming dripping out of its nose. The beak is melting a little bit. <laughs> like, wait, what's that thing that mixes with bleach? You're not supposed to mix with. Ammonia. Ammonia. Yeah, but that's going to kill us. Watch it. I'll create a toxic gas. It will, because yeah. then the gas will all die. That <laughs> yeah. is true. That is true. These are all true statements. Uh, oh. Yeah, I was across from uh, Temple Square when they had to evacuate because of that. Oh, yeah. That situation. Can I try to yeah. jinx him into doing yeah. something? Yeah, yeah, let's try to jinx that ammonia. I don't know. 
somehow gets inside of him. <laughs> oh, poo. Oh, I didn't do as good this time. My good rolls. So I rolled a five, but my plus two weird makes it a seven. Okay. So it wasn't garbage, yeah. but mm-hmm. it wasn't great. So you jinx him, and your jinx is successful. The issue is that he is now right next to you. Oh, of course, of course, of course. Any of you fail a roll, he will inflict harm on you just by virtue of his uh, proximity. However, he is also within striking distance and not taking proactive uh, action against you. Does um, anybody have a knife? So I, I do. I do. I have a question now yeah. for, for Mr. Can I sense a kind of uh, magical, let's just say phenomenon going on around this thing? Or yeah. is, okay. So I'm going to use something that I have as one of my moves My is my force of will. I can apply my will to dispelling a magical effect, blocking spell, or suspend a phenomenon by rolling my weird. Go for it. Plus I can... A okay. great choice. Right, let's see. Sorry, I was not paying attention. God. That would be a 10. <laughs> nice. It kept rolling on me. I'm like, what are you landing on? What are you landing on? <laughs> right. well, just as, as this uh, plague mask gets close to him, Josh says, hold on, there's something weird here. Hold on. And he traces and I just, some and I, and I, just I just go. <laughs> and the mask crumbles to dust. And the entire forest just kind of fades into mist behind you. Hmm. So was the forest the minions? <laughs> You don't know. Like, I was trying to be nice to the forest. I'm a little bit of fake. You know. See, this nice. is why I say burn it all. That's Didn't not help what you it. Do. <laughs> Especially not when we're in it. Obviously, it worked. <laughs> it did. You you dis uh, you dispelled the demon of pestilence. Good job. Complete. We got bleach <laughs> and fire, the force of will, and bleach saved the day. <laughs> bleach always saves the day. <laughs> oh, quick question. Do I still have a mite head? Yes, yes. you still have oh. a mite head. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Gross. Like <laughs> penguin, mite head. You need one more. I need to unlock one more. like all the animals. All you, need to, you need to be like a megazord. <laughs> <laughs> all one of them more animal. together. Um, Brett, would we're, you? We're gonna. I, I'm just gonna take a quick break. I'm gonna go to the restroom. Yeah, let's do a quick uh, five minute break. All right. And we'll get to this.
and go. All right. Welcome back after the break. So you guys just defeated the Demon of Pestilence and its host, Taime. Where do you guys want to go next? Now, as a recap, there was the, the disembodied demons of war and death and the embodied uh, demon of famine inside a sprite. Not a can of sprite, an eight inch fairy. <laughs> Dang it. So, and if I recall, one of, in our early investigation, when we first, before we set out, we needed to take care of the ones that were in bodies, right? Uh, yes, because they still had, you managed to foil the plots of the necromancer and the pigman, but there are still plots that might hurt people, even if you stop the, the demons. In, um, so, even but then if we fail, also still have to fight at least one more demon, right? Yeah. Okay. So you need to you need to defeat at least two demons to foil Edo, which is the Jin's plan. Um, and you can choose disembodied or embodied. It's just if you don't choose the embodied ones, the plots that the embodied uh, hosts or that the embodied demons were working on will still come to pass, even if you uh, stop the larger plot. That also means we essentially, if we go after the one that has a body, that's like a double boss fight. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we, we, can, the, we can, we can hit it with a, with a can of spray. <laughs> like bug spray. <laughs> Off. Deet. The newest, the one that has a human body, so that's the famine one, right? Yeah. yeah. So the demon of famine is embodied in a, an eight inch garbage sprite. I feel like um, that's the one we should go against. Now we could see all of these locations from where we were at at that crossroads, right? Yeah, you can still see them. They're just further away. All right, so I say we blink back to the crossroads real quick, and then we'll go from there. Unless... I won't even make you roll for that. All right. Sweet. Because you've got a little time, you're focusing in, you blink back to the crossroads. Uh, I cast it as a ritual. Uh... <laughs> I said that as a neck beard. <laughs> Where's your fedora? <laughs> Go along with that neck beard. Yeah, well, I don't have a fedora on me. You're going to have to just pretend. <laughs> All righty. So, you guys can choose one of three directions. The demon of death went across, went uh, out onto the. Uh, the lake, ocean, sea. You don't know what it is. You just can't see the, uh, the other edge. Um, he goes over the horizon. You can head toward the city where the demon of death went, or you can go to the, the plain or grassland where the demon of famine went. All so, I know is I got a couple holes in me. I need to get patched up. Oh, even gotta... then, let me check with you, Josh, though. After all is said and done, are you did are you pretty much where you were when we started this last adventure? Didn't you get some some health back? Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm just slightly worse, but I'm still unstable. <laughs> yeah. Meaning that he's going to continue getting worse ah. when he fails tests. <laughs> How's everybody else? I'm all good after I ate the Sylvan's head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I uh, became a it was, some, okay. it was some primo bark. It was <laughs> that good, good bark. Like good, good. you know, you know, you know that wood wood that really nice would they have at Home Depot. It was not that stuff. It's the stuff that you go to the actual wood store for. <laughs> like that's their job. Yeah. Type of good. That is yeah. all they do all day long. It's plain free wood. harm at the moment. But... Okay. I mean, I can roll. I can roll to uh, heal Josh. Just keeping in mind that there is a risk that I can cause more harm, but it's it's a we low risk. It has to be a well, terrible roll. There is that Josh has alternate, a had a bit that alternate yeah, world move. It's true. Um, and it, it, you've noticed that since since we've defeated this this thing, he's kind of gone kind of had everything's kind of drained in color for him. The world has. 
he's just kind of going along now. So mm. he no longer has the fire. You know, yeah, he no longer has the fire. He's like Zuko in in season beginning of season three. He no longer has the good fire bending. <laughs> Charlemagne, are you okay? Because you still have that zombie I am. stuff. I do have that, but as far as any kind of harm, I have nothing. So, oh, okay. are you hiding the zombie bite? Because I'm gonna, I'm, no, no hiding zombie bites. It was right <laughs> out in the open, like right here. Yeah. We all see it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't. However, it, it does look like it's not having much of an impact. It's not growing. You don't feel anything weird coming from it. Okay, because yeah, it's only one. Yeah. Degree. Yeah. So I mean, if Josh, this is up to you. Do you want me to try to heal you? I'm pretty experienced. We could do it the normal way, or if we want to like explore an alternate rule way, we can. Yeah, I trust your way. I don't understand how things work in this area. Me neither. Who can okay. blame you? That's because... devil, the, the devil you know, right? Yeah. Okay. Bandages and we, ibuprofen. I got a nine. So two, seven to nine, two harm or stabilize the injury. I, I, say, we, I say we go with the stabilize. Okay. Because even, cool. even if it puts me, I can't remember, Brent, do you remember? if it, Even if it puts me over the line of the stabilizing, it still doesn't stabilize me, right? Um. Yeah, it doesn't stabilize you until you stabilize the... the okay. Area. So, you so will no just, longer take additional harm if you fail. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, unless something else hurts you. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so he's more stable, but still hurting. Where I'm leaning, honestly, is to go after this, the sprite. Even though it's a double fight, I feel like we came out of this last one okay we could have been way more damaged so we might as well keep on fighting because if three of us die but the, we save all of humanity i think that that's i mean we're already here we don't even know if we can get back yeah yeah i'm, I'm okay with going after the he never told right. us if we can go back home we, we forgot to ask yeah <laughs> can, we, can we be like janet and <laughs> Janet, <laughs> we'll pop up, please. Like, what up, girls? I'm not a girl. Not a girl. <laughs> not a girl. <laughs> you can try. So I call mean, Charles and ask him questions. Yeah, I'd say Charles. roll plus weird to see if you can uh, communicate. Call our own Janet. Yeah. Who wants to do that? Oh shoot! Uh, I'll try to do it since I have plus two on weird. Okay, and really impressive dice. Yeah, I don't know how that's happening. Because last night it was not as good as this. <laughs> yep. my... I just rolled a four. So <laughs> nice. <laughs> With plus two, I rolled a six. So Mark and you experience. Com you communicated with other mites in the area, but all you heard is mite music. <laughs> <laughs> like it's like, like the music oosh, at the end. <laughs> no, you just you have this a striking urge to go gnaw on some like the the oils coming off of some of the skin of from sweat and stuff. You're like, ooh, let's eat some of that too. Gross. That's a different kind of mite. Yeah. Yuck. Oak I mites are terrible. They they'll gnaw at you. And they're bad for oak trees too. So <laughs> So sorry everybody. <laughs> Now you resist the temptation, it's just still there. Oh, okay. Your, your mightiness is coming out. I can try um, contacting Charles. I now have plus two weird. <laughs> Go for it. Got a nine. Okay. Uh, so Charles pops up, and this time he doesn't look anything like you've ever seen him. He looks like his face is almost metal. It's statuesque, big old, like, gold wings. The whole nine of the serif uh, stuff. So, you should have asked questions before. What do you want? <laughs> hey, uh... Can we go home? <laughs> Can we go home? 
Okay, if you can get- stop Edo from getting what he wants, sure, I'll send you home. Is that a promise? Like if alive? Survive, I will yeah, send- I was say that too, like safely? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now, uh, Carson, giving his uh, lie detector that he is, knows that, uh, you know, his word is good. If you guys survive, he will send you home. But he does not expect you to survive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, do you guys have anything else you want to ask Charles, like, that we feel like we didn't cover before? Um, I I know who to, I know how to, you know, kill that other one. How to so what do we use on the sprite? Like, <laughs> like a big can of raid? No. Um. Here's the problem. She's a garbage sprite. And for breeze. <laughs> well, no, unfortunately. More bleach. <laughs> More bleach. Well, she is invulnerable to just about anything because she can make any physical substance that touch her touches her rot into nothingness. So your bullet. The minute it would even come close to her, it rusts into dust. Really, I mean, the only thing that you can do- you More fire! <laughs> the only real solution is magical means to harm her. However, Muck is a special case. She's not in this to hurt people. She's in this to fit in. She, uh... To fit in with who? Well, the thing is, she's a garbage sprite. All of the other fairies and all the other fairy creatures, I mean, they're beautiful and they have butterflies floating around them. She's got gnats. Nobody wants to hang out with somebody who lives in and loves garbage. So she felt out ostracized her entire life. Edo made her feel included. So she's going to do whatever he says. If you can help her see that this is the wrong choice, she might just change uh, the course of things. So we may not or even you have just to you know, magically kill, kill her if you want. So we may not actually have to kill her. We may we could just manipulate her or mm-hmm. power of friendship. That's what I was gonna yeah. say. Let's genuinely just befriend her. We yeah. We can. We already proved that we're interested in that sort of thing with how most of us dealt with the forest. <laughs> Listen, I had an agenda. I fulfilled that agenda. I'll go yeah. with whatever you guys want. Well, and you didn't actually try to hurt the forest. You just didn't. It was like collateral damage, and you exactly. Didn't care. It's collateral damage. And I ca- currently look like a like a mite. So maybe yeah. she's like, "Oh my goodness, you're like one of my little creature things." I'm like, "No, but yes." But I understand. <laughs> oh, which reminds me, that's one of my I temptations. I got to mark experience. <laughs> hmm? Um, well, on a hex, uh, you have a temptation. If you give in to your temptation, uh, you get to mark experience. My temptation is callousness. Use magic without regard for the safety of others. <laughs> I have nothing to give me experience except maybe a bad roll. Yeah, I, I think that's common. Most people don't. <laughs> yeah, the the the, book, the playbooks in the uh, Tome of Mysteries are a little eh, off kilter. Yeah, in my opinion. Which is why I don't let people run them like at conventions. <laughs> yep. So what do you think? Should we go? Let's go just meet Muck and see what we can do. Let's go see what we can do for her. Okay. So are you going to try to blink over to the forest? Okay, do you want to roll for it or do you want me to just hand wave it? Rolling for it gives you another chance to fail or to succeed. Whichever you prefer. <laughs> forest or the field, you mean? The, the fields, I mean. Okay. Yeah, the fields, the grasslands. The grasslands. What happens if you just wave us there? Uh, you just get there. No oh. chance of failure, no... I'm gonna, failure. I'm gonna roll it. Oh, okay. <laughs> just because I'm like... I thought you don't care anymore. Two away from experience, so I want the experience. Mm. So you're intentionally trying to... to... Damn it! <laughs> A ten. You succeeded! Stupid winning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you blink right into the center of this massive grassland. What appear to be buffalo are off to your left grazing. And right in front of you, uh, 
sitting on a um, on several stalks that are bent over is Muck. She's got her head in her hands. Her hair is long down her back, um, dark. It has the iridescent sheen of an oil slick. Little gnats are buzzing around her. She's got a banana peel for a skirt and an old discarded candy wrapper as her blouse. <laughs> so I... She looks up, she's like, you're here to kill me. Ado said you'd try to kill me. Don't try to kill me, I'll rot you. <laughs> I just want a burger, and I point at the buffalo. <laughs> Um, I would, I don't know, I'd like to try to braid her hair. I would, I'd like to, her hair is so long. I just think it would, I think it's amazing. I'd love to be able to just braid it. So are you going to try to manipulate her into letting you uh, braid her hair? Yeah, I suppose that's manipulate, right? Like, I always think, see manipulate is like a harmful thing, but I guess in this case... Manipulate is just trying to get to somebody to do something that they wouldn't normally let you do. Yeah. Or that they normally wouldn't do. In this I mean, point. I have a zero charm, so it's not a negative. <laughs> You're welcome to try it. Let's, I'm going to do it. Let's, let's do this. Uh, I got a seven. A seven? Okay. They, she, she says, I guess you can braid my hair. <laughs> now, long for her is really rather short for you. I mean, it's maybe three or four inches. <laughs> okay. I mean, French um, braid, you can French braid yeah. really short hair. So, yeah. so you grab it and you start braiding and your fingers just come away greasy. Like just. <laughs> I'm just going to ignore it. It still looks real pretty. But it's just, it feels gross. <laughs> yeah. I mean, while I'm doing it, I just like, I just, I knew this would look good on you. Thank you. I know it's weird you just met me, but I just couldn't help it. Okay. As you do that, you notice that the, uh, let's see. So uh, one of your bracelets that you're wearing for your steampunkiness, uh, the leather on it starts to age and crumble. Um as you're braiding her hair. <laughs> okay, so it's like... Aura I'm, going, I'm going to use my sea dolphins together Okay. to try and get her to realize that Ido is just using her and that by doing this, she's... the fairies will, the, the, you know, the other sprites will never accept her. Ah, okay. I like that. Got a 12. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, she says, well, I mean, he, you're right, he's using me, but I mean, friends use each other all the time. I mean, he's the first person who actually listened to me and wanted to be around me. So she absolutely bought everything you said. She's still just holding out a little bit because, well, I mean, he's the first person to be nice. <laughs> I'm just trying to think, so, okay, so I think of the concept of fertilizer, right? It's something that's rotten, it's, or, you know, to an ex it's rotten and it smells bad, but, I mean, that's where life comes from. That's what nurtures and feeds things. So mm -hmm. I'm just trying to think of a, a way to communicate to her how important that is, that process is to life. Um, so what do you guys think? What could we do? I can try to use telepathy to try to like get that message across to her and like in a sense where it's not like me trying to negotiate just like give off an emotion I guess I don't know oh I, I love that it's, it's the whole see I'm opening up it's this this is how I feel and you yeah. can tell that because you know it's mind-to-mind -mind connection yeah I want to be as vulnerable and nice to her as possible because I don't want to disintegrate and die with a might head okay <laughs> so because Trix is so damaged, how do you think her experiences and her, you know, bitterness with certain parts of life is going to play into this? Is it going to help her? Is it going to hinder that? 
it might help because she's kind of screwed up because when she killed her dad she was 12 right. so it was from like a what's it called what's the word puberty type situation gotcha. so her brain is kind of like not open to opening up to people she had a like in the last time with her group she had a breakdown in front of a random lady and start talking about bunnies so this might hopefully help like opening up just a little bit okay hopefully it won't bite us in the butt so do you think so do you think Trix has a little more empathy yeah maybe that's being what... like left out okay cause... so what i'm gonna say is that this is going to be a slightly harder test for you, but your success will have much greater impact. Okay, let's hope this works. Does that sound good? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> the weed. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that I'm not sure whether that's a good laugh or a bad laugh. And it's the plant that I had from earlier. Yeah, I was thinking about that plant. <laughs> I don't know. Will this plant come in handy? The plant was weird. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to roll for this first and hope something good comes out of it. Okay, that's not bad. I rolled a seven. And I would be... Do, 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 do. Plus would that Because it's telepathy. Plus weird, so it would be a nine. Okay. Yay. So... She is now convinced that you guys are looking out for what's best for her. She acknowledges Carson's arguments. It does fit together. She understands it now. And she's willing to, to go with you and follow your arguments to their logical conclusion. And she is now just Trix's best friend. Unfortunately, when you're best friends with a sprite, you get pranked. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so as she comes up to give you a big hug, you feel the straps of your backpack rot, and it just drops to the ground, like it just falls to the ground behind you. <laughs> and you can tell that the seams right there just were completely rotted through instantaneously. <laughs> oh, dang. <laughs> it's okay. I've got pockets everywhere. We will just pick up that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you're right. I never liked hurting people. And I mean, destroying the entire world's food supply did seem needlessly cruel. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I'd, I'd really rather not. But the problem is I'm possessed by this demon of famine. And if I go against Edo, it kills me. And then still does what Edo wants it to. So, I don't want to die. I just found friends. <laughs> so I, I feel like we should... Oh. I'm doing investigate to try and figure out if we can get the demon out of her without killing her. Sure. Because uh, there's that or it's um, read a bad situation. What's the best way to protect the victims? Because she's... Yeah. I got a 10. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm guessing that the question you're asking is how do you get the demon out without killing her? Yep. It will be big magic. Um, meaning there are significant risks and it will take significant time. If you do this, you will not have time to stop the two other demons. Yeah, but we only have to stop two. You only so have the... to stop two. However, uh, what Charles pointed out is that each one has the potential to kill 25% of the Earth's population. Which... So, either stop stop this one and save her to kill the demon in her and sacrifice half the world or wipe her out so we can kill herself by going against Edo kill and try to save down the other two I mean statistically <laughs> maybe we really should start over with half the population of the world again but this is a moral quandary, you guys are saying. We, we, we could split the party. Yes. And have, have somebody go and handle the other two demons. Also, I have a feeling it would have to be, for sure, Trix would have to stay here. 
Yeah, I would, because I don't think she's going to allow you guys to stay with her by herself. Yeah. Can we get her to go with us? Um, yes. However, the, the magic is incredibly attention consuming, so one of you would not be able to help with the other demons. You'd be focused on keeping Muck going and getting that demon out of her. Got it. How about this? How about this? Uh, hey, Muck. You come with us. You help us with the other guys. And then we'll get that demon out of you. When will she automatically... Because you said that she'll die if she betrays him. Yep. So how like fast would it like trigger that she's betrayed him as soon as she definitive like as soon as she makes that decision that she's no longer going to help him so far she's just expressed that she doesn't want to she's not said she will not do it yeah so pretty much if she goes and tries to defend like try to kill the others she's gonna end up dying cool 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 so i don't know so humans our souls exist after our bodies die is this the same for a sprite um, she honestly doesn't know. She never really paid attention in sprite school. <laughs> she always had to sit in the corner with the dunce cap. Yeah, She's a garbage uh, sprite. She didn't need a lot of school. So I, th- I think we need to tell her what's at stake. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will not even make you roll for that unless you want to. Do you want to try to to convince her that it's worth it to to die to save the world. I again, I shouldn't be the one. I can, I can I can use my see it all fits together again and try and get yeah. her to see it. Yeah, do those things. Okay. It's not going well. Oh, but I'll, dang. Use, I'll use a luck. Oh, you get a for that. Okay. I nice. still have a lot of that. Oh yeah, me too. I mean, I forgot. Anyway, so she is convinced. And the minute she says, you're right, I can't let that happen. She gasps and just starts falling into dust. Mm-hmm. And when that dust uh, resolves itself, uh, it falls away, it falls away from um, what looks like a glowing cornucopia filled with rotting food. And it says, you may have uh, turned my host against my master, but you won't defeat me. I can't Um, fireball at it. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Um, (laughs) You throw a fireball at it. I'm not going to make you roll for that real uh, yet unless you want to. No, okay. not in particular. So you throw that fireball, it hits the cornucopia, and it looks like the food inside actually just decays some more. It does not harm it at all. In fact, if anything, it just made it move along faster. I feel like we need to refrigerate it, preserve it a little. Maybe spray some shellac or something. <laughs> some salt. Use some salt. Ooh. Yeah. Salt it. One big barrel of salt. So makes it Stick taste it in better. in a freezer. <laughs> yeah. Or like smoke it, dry it out, you know, like jerky. <laughs> oh, true. We you can make some raisins out of it. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. We just, we just got to create the world. So yeah, let's just, let, let's, what's all the preservation versions? So we got salt, we got freezing it, we got. <laughs> Sugar is a good preservative. Like yes. Jam. We can pickle I, I, it. I'm gonna conjure mm. one. We, yo, one conjure one giant pick, pickle jar. Hey, why don't we conjure, a, roll what if we conjure up, a giant garbage truck or garbage no. truck? No, just make it rot more. Yeah, but then it's where it belongs. What do you, what right? do, you do with with rotting food? I throw it out. I put it in a compost. <laughs> What I probably That's what I'm did. saying. Turn it into fertilizer, right? Then it stops being a bad thing. Let's try. You said you want us to roll for something? You're all going to try to hit it with different things. Um, why don't each of you make a roll? Uh, I know Thomas was uh, recommending that Carson might want to investigate. Um, the rest of you are just kind of throwing out ideas. You decide how you want to approach this. 
and I'll just kind of go one by one and see what your uh, method was and what your result was. I got a 12. Okay, so Carson is doing what? Investigating. Okay. Um, it makes virtually no sense, but you get the feeling that fresh foods uh, will counteract it and actually harm it. So, yes, hitting it with a baguette would harm it. <laughs> okay. How dare you? What did Josh do? I tried to conjure a giant vat of uh, pickle ju pickling juice. Okay. Just like one big uh, jar, you know, just like Vlasic, you know, it's right underneath it to try to catch it and everything. So I just like, just, ah, and roll the four. <laughs> so go ahead and mark an experience. All of you are now swimming in a giant above ground pool filled with pickle juice. Mmm. <laughs> Electrolytes. And I am hacking away Electric. at this. I'm just, I, it's, it, just like I myself, I think pickles are just the worst. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see. What did Trix do? Okay. Does Carson have enough time to tell me that fresh foods will hurt, hurt it? This is all happening simultaneously. You all just kind of. Bad jump. gum. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was thinking about what was it that I said, raisining it or freezing okay. it, and I rolled a nine. So <laughs> I'm okay. gonna try to blast some cold air, <laughs> like a like a blizzard type coldness out of my hands to hopefully okay. chill it out. You see ice and what looks like, uh, you know, that that frost that you get on the inside of your freezer. Mm -hmm. around this and you you can tell that the decay on this is slowing so that it, it does have some effect it doesn't do harm but it does prevent it from doing a uh using one of its powers on you which counteracted what would have happened because of josh's failure <laughs> you know other than swimming in pickle juice <laughs> what was charlamagne doing well, I got a 10, okay. and I was all about the sugar. Like I was saying with jelly, that's what okay. preserves the... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you dump a giant tub of sugar over this halfway frozen uh, cornucopia, <laughs> and now you're swimming in sugary, um, sugary pickle sugar. juice. <laughs> <laughs> and this thing, your sugar, because that's a, a food stuff, is hurting it. Um, not significantly, because it's it's a diffuse attack as opposed to a, a specific one. But you did deal some harm. Whew. And 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 unbeknownst to us, the world actually now all has diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now you are all swimming in pickle juice, uh, sugary pickle juice. Carson has the solution. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell people I'm gonna tell everybody that uh, guys. Yeah, hey guys, just we need to get like fresh food and hit it with fresh food. I don't know why. It makes sense. Hmm. Um, right. But then I want to conjure. You're counteracting famine. Yeah. All right, like grain. We need like. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna. Like, what kind of field are we? Like, what is the field we're in? Is it like uh, a... It, it's like a, a prairie grass. Okay. So there's not, like, wheat or anything growing. Uh, there's maybe some wild wheat around, but nothing cultivated. What about, like, uh, a buffalo stampede? Oh, there are several buffalo around. You, I guess you could conjure up a stampede. In our pool of... In your pool of pickle juice. Vinegar or... Sugary pickle sugar. juice. Yeah. Oh, so sweet idea. pickles. Sweet pickles. <laughs> Can I try um, to use the tune in to try to like communicate with that with the um or just use magic in general to try to communicate with the buffaloes to try to get them to stampede this random floating rotting cornucopia. How are where are we though? I don't want to get trampled. That is also true statements. Yeah. <laughs> we we, we are in the pool. Above you, like directly ahead as you're all treading pickle juice. I'm gonna I'm gonna conjure 
I'm gonna conjure a, a sword made out of a baguette. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm assuming that's plus weird. Yeah. What'd you get? Six. <laughs> Go ahead and mark an experience. Um, the problem is you, you conjure the baguette just fine. But the problem is you're still swimming. And so it gets soaked with pickle juice and just starts falling apart in your hand. And as you're doing that, you realize, hold on, I am ridiculously hungry right now. And your stomach growls loud enough that the entire group just hears it. <laughs> and that's a minus one forward. Um, what? Yes, you do until famine is defeated. Minus one what on what? On all tests. Okay. What's containing the... We're... A giant open jar that's like above ground pool sized, except the... taller even. Then I'm going to pull we... out... Um... How did we get inside of it? I conjured it, it by accident. Yeah, know, freaking did it Josh. The ground? Did it raise will... it on the ground? Or, like, how, how did we just end up here? I, it, I willed it. <laughs> okay. Well, I want to break the jar. Okay. Um, I can, I think I, I want to do it with a, with a, which fires better in wet, a shotgun or a rifle? Um, I would assume a shotgun. I mean, you're only going to, I mean, in wet conditions, mostly they only get one shot underwater. Now, if, I mean, well, that's fine. I, I just want even a, fire when they're wet, it's just they're yeah. less efficient. Exactly. I just, even a crack in the jar should be enough to break it. It's big and it's right. full of stuff. So, so I'm going to roll to, um, to kick some ass, I guess, because I want to yeah. break something. Yeah. God damn it. I got a six. <laughs> Let me make sure that's right. I have all kinds of awesome extra stuff going on. You could, you could always use luck. You could. I think I, I'm, you know, I'm going to because I've never used luck. So I'm going to use luck. Okay. Um, so the pellets hit the glass and you see it crack and spider web and you hear that. And then it just flows out. And so all of you are just swept out into the grassy plain in a stream of sugary pickle juice <laughs> right beneath this rotting cornucopia as it is thawing in this noonday sun. Nice. We're free now. However, the splash did splash some pickle juice on it, so it did hurt it. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> now, now, how high up above us is it? Um, it's like, if you reached up, you could touch it. Okay. But, I mean, it's, it's not like a, you know, I'm sitting down, I can reach it. It's, you've got to be standing to reach it. Okay. Someone needs to conjure, like, apples or something. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to conjure up. Uh, I'm going to be like, okay. <sighs> All right. I got it. I got it. I got it. And then I'm going to roll my weird. And that is a six. God damn. Go ahead and mark an experience. That would be a level up for me. Yeah. Um, and what I was trying to conjure is, you know, we're obviously we're leaving, we don't want to touch it, right? We don't want right. to touch it, but we got to be able to throw something at it. But, you know, not everyone might have good aim. So we just got to scatter shot it because I, just like with the shotgun, well, what do you throw that's food? Rice, uh, like at a wedding. <laughs> well, Let's make it rain, clean water. <laughs> so, what happens there, Mister uh, Mister Mister Keeper? <laughs> since I okay. failed my my roll, <laughs> um, you conjure a bowl of rice, <laughs> but you have such incredibly ravenous hunger strike you that you take two harm from just shoving uncooked rice down your throat. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> and that puts me as unstable again. <laughs> as the rice is expanding in your stomach, you're thinking, oh no, that was a bad idea. Why did I do that? <laughs> uh, 
Man, Am I I'm able to stop bailing, man? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I just I'm like switching out dice and everything. I just can't get any good rolls. So uh, tricks. It's been a second since you uh, attempted anything. I'm quite concerned about what is happening currently around me. Yeah, from <laughs> from the pickle and jar breaking to rice baguette eating i'm gonna try to conjure apples like charlemagne mentioned because okay. i can't conjure the buffalo and not conjure the buffaloes but bring the buffaloes towards us because we're literally under the cornucopia so yeah. if i tell them to come we're all getting hit <laughs> so i'm gonna try to just like do a apple shower actually a watermelon shower because they're bigger oh. and it'll cause more pain <laughs> and they splatter much better than apples do very nice. So, okay. I'm going to try to calm you're gonna, me up. You're going to totally, uh, what's it called? Um, God damn, what's the comedian with the, with the watermelon? Gallagher. Gallagher. Thank you. You're going to totally Gallagher it. <laughs> we'll smash all of the watermelons on top of this cornucopia's head. Okay. This would just be magic, right? So be yep. plus. Okay. Oh, no. She's gone. All the watermelon is splattered everywhere. So what'd you get? Sorry, you you uh, throws up. First. Oh, it says my internet connection is unstable. Yeah. Oh. I don't know why, because nothing has changed this past amount of time. Um, I rolled a 13. Oh, golly. Damn. That means somehow we don't even get hit with a watermelon. Yes, we all oh, don't how get did you do that? We got we know. stayed outside of the splash zone. <laughs> we listened to the announcer ladies like stay outside of the splash area. <laughs> the first so, three rows are part inside of the splash zone. You're thinking, oh, I'm gonna have it rain watermelons, and the last moment you think, hold on, I played softball in high school. I've got an idea here, and you conjure a softball throwing uh appar- like oh. rig with those tiny watermelons and it's you've got a big old hopper and you're just sitting there chucking watermelon after watermelon using this mechanized throwing machine at the cornucopia it's just a thud splat thud splat thud splat (laughs) this is good this is all of the good things Now, as I describe these things, this is also your stuff, so if you want to go with something, just say what you want to go with. No, that's fantastic. As the watermelon is splashing, <laughs> I'm just going to, like, I want to eat one of the watermelons, because I'm hung. I'm not really hungry. Actually, I'm going to give it to some of the others, because isn't Carson out here being real famished? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, you are going up against the, the demon of famine. The only reason you're not feeling this ravenous hunger is that you have... Uh, succeeded (laughs) so carson is starving so is josh i mean well not so much anymore as he's full of rice rice. (laughs) that's dangerous indeed right especially because i'm down to my uh my last my last harm again (laughs) If, okay, so since I rolled so well, can my watermelon heal them if they eat it? You know what? I will allow it. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, eat the watermelon. <laughs> it's it's the, the, the most amazing. This is so the funny because this is I've Robert's favorite food. <laughs> yeah, like it's yeah. Watermelon's great. You, yeah. you, want, you, you, you commit murder and ask me like to bury the body, body and you come come with me burying like gummy bears and uh, some watermelon. Uh, I won't ask any questions. <laughs> You're like, ah, yes. Like, gotcha, man. Gotcha, bro. Let's go. You know the part from like, like Happy Feet when he's like, taste the water, Dave. It's really real. <laughs> taste the watermelon, guys. It's really real. <laughs> really, really. Taste the the you just fall to your knees and start chowing down on these broken watermelon pieces. And uh, for Jack, it causes you to vomit up all that rice because you're just scarfing it down. Uh, both of you can heal to, uh, to harm. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Charlemagne! How hurt and is the I'm watching, You know, 
the two guys in the party just get down on hands and knees and start scarfing watermelon and start this rotting cornucopia. Yeah. yeah Back is puking and then eating more watermelon. And Trix is just sitting there shooting her soft her softball pitching machine at the cornucopia. <laughs> With her might head. With her might head. <laughs> gotta gotta remember the might head. Yeah, she still has the might head. <laughs> I'm keeping it. It's not. It's there. That's strong look. Just. That's a very strong look. It terrifies everybody. No one's gonna mess with someone with a might head. It's not even the first question. Like, why do you have a might head? No, the first question is, oh my god! Run away. You know, that's you know, that's how you know it's frightening. Charles didn't even bring up my might head when he saw us. He was just like, that's there. There you go. Right. It's not the weirdest thing you've seen today. No. <laughs> All right, so Charlemagne. Um, so did you say it caused harm when it was hit with the... With the watermelon, watermelon yeah. The cornucopia is hurting, mm -hmm. but it's not yet defeated. I mean, I'm really thinking it just needs to be smothered in something. I think grain, it needs to be something that really fights famine. Because it's either going to be grain or it's going to be water, clean water, because nothing can grow without it. Okay. So I have not good with magic, though. Um, now, remember, you can create, you can conjure things in the alternate world using cool. Right. So I think I want to act under pressure, and I I notice that there are some clouds gathering a little bit down. Uh, some rain clouds. It looks like a hefty storm, and I want to pull those clouds this way and make that storm happen right here on the cornucopia. Clean okay. water. Go for it. Okay. Oh. Uh, let's see. Ten. Okay. So you bring the clouds over, and you summon them toward you with the intent to harm this thing with the purity of fresh water, and the rain cascades down and it doesn't seem to do anything. But because of the magical effect and your intent, a patch of wheat springs up and grows at incredibly rapid pace. You lose sight of both Carson and Josh as it grows past them. And as the little, as the top tendrils of the wheat touch the cornucopia, it's just like this empty howl of rage. And it tries moving but it's still growing and it tries moving the other way and it crumbles to dust. <laughs> yes. Wait, let's get out of here. Let's go get the other two. From amongst, <laughs> the, from amongst the wheat, you hear, why am I more watermelon than man? <laughs> what happened to Muck? So is she gone, gone? She died. She's dead. She's dead. She sacrificed herself for humanity. Who now I'm sad. Her? A little yeah. bit of backstory. Um, we played a uh, a custom setting for a fantasy game that uh, my cousin created, and my wife's character was Muck. Um, she likes just the oddball characters, and so she thought, you know, we could I could be a fairy, but what's weird about what would be a weird thing for a fairy to be? A garbage sprite. She's still pretty. She's still got the wings, but she's oily. She wears a banana peel. Nobody, none of the other sprites like her. So it's kind of where I got the, the core idea for it. It was probably one of my favorite characters that I've ever uh, seen in an RPG. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> anyway, so you guys are still in the middle of the, uh, this vast plain. There is now like a 12 foot tall uh, patch of wheat in about a 10 yard radius. Oh, but you know what? Now we are not covered in pickle, sticky sugar pickle juice because it rained. It did. Thank goodness. I cause... To the skin. <laughs> oh, phew. <laughs> I come out of the, you know, the wheat field, still munching on some watermelon. <laughs> yeah, it's good. <laughs> Sounds about right. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess we have two more to fight. You have two more to fight, but you've already done enough to defeat or to foil Ado's plan. True. You can go back to the crossroads and just try to face, uh, try to convince your 
benefactor <laughs> to take you back, or you can try to uh, face down the other two demons. Oh, um, I mean, how tough was the uh, the other two? Well, the uh, the death dude, he was weird, and he was the one that was defeated by a ginormous penguin spirit. So it was penguin spirit and explosions. But I do have the drug that the weed that he used. So I don't know. I still have no idea what that weed does, though. So that's a problem. Ours was just all about the violence, you know. Yep. And com and manipulating others to commit violence. Not so, so sure I want to mess with that dude. It was just classic brutal fight, 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 fight kind of. You think there'd be any way to convince Ado to kind of give things up? It's like talk yeah. to, like go straight to the source. I don't think he'll do it though. Well, we could because he's gonna lose the bet. Mm -hmm. So there is that. It's like so you're losing your bet no matter what. Do you really want to kill off half of humanity if you're gonna lose either way? He'll probably say yes. Yeah, because he seems just, like a just jerk. out of out of <laughs> holy retribution. But we only know about him from Charles. That's also true. true. Yeah. Now I can remind you of one thing. He is a degenerate gambler. That is something that Charles was so very to, clear about. We could gamble with him. Yeah, make That's a bet. True. We, we can be like Doctor Strange and be like, Dormammu, I'm here for a bargain. Keep <laughs> <laughs> that going. Just keep it going. <laughs> what are we gonna what are we gonna what are we gonna what are we gonna bet against him though? Like I don't know. Again, a watermelon. Percent, fifty percent of the souls that he was going to collect are gone. I was going to say so. he, our souls. Oh, that's that. That's a bad though. Mm -hmm, it is terrible. <laughs> the, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Yeah, uh, that is also and, true. And that's why we do what we do. It's not actually what I do. What I do, I was literally just tagging along with some dudes because uh. I, because one of the guys is a horrible liar and I thought he was really entertaining so I just like latched on to him and his friend and I was like I'll just go along for the ride and I became a consultant because I'm supernatural That's I was idea. never in for it for anything so you've got the altruists here and then you've got Trix who's like oh, I'm out <laughs> I'm all for saving or she's people. still like what? whatever I'll just follow you guys I will follow you, but I will not bargain my life. Y'all can bargain yours. Well, and the thing is, I don't know that that how many people that truly can save because we are in the know. We're in the habit of fighting exactly these kinds of things. So who will do it if we are gone? That's true. I don't know. What do you guys want to do? Josh. All I know is my team's gone. My team was my family. I got nothing to go back to. So you want to fight? I'll do whatever you want. Honestly. We're fighting. Dang it. <laughs> but who we are we go fighting? Out. Yeah, we want to go up against the other ones. Let's go up against the other ones. We want to go up against A Dick or whatever his name is. I'm good with that too. I think we're going to go against Ado because. If we vanquish the one dude, like one of the demons, it's not, go there's still going to be 25% of humanity who's still going to die no matter what. And if we go back to Charles, 50% will die. And the only thing to probably do is cut off the head from its source, which will be Edo. But. <laughs> Where do all those souls go, though, that are still Ooh. floating around, that are on that gambling table? Like. Yeah, and won't Charles be won't Charles be disappointed that half of his hall is gone now? Like, it's, his plot still is very confusing. Yeah, that's a, it's a, a lot little... of nerd, like. Sense. So let me just try to explain it a little bit because I, I feel like I didn't do a great job as Charles explaining it. Basically, because uh, Ado can't pay him all of it, he gets all of what Ado has, and Ado is imprisoned as a gin in a bottle, or lamp, or whatever, a vessel of some kind um, until somebody chooses to free him. You know, the old genie story. Um, 
But the thing is, because Charles takes all of what Edo has, he collects all of those souls, uh, regardless of whether humanity dies or not, he still gets 100% of the souls. The ones you've saved and the ones that Edo kills. It's just... So at this point, let me double check then. At this point, Edo's lost his bet. He's going to be a djinn. So that's, at this point, that has happened. Yes, he is going to be captive and subservient to a mortal. Okay, so that part's solved. Because that... We just defeated, we ruined his bet. So he's, that's his consequence. He's no one, he's not to be defeated now. We still have Charles to deal with, who's still taking souls. So it's either we say, screw it, let's just go home and let 50% of humanity die in the last couple of things or continue on and try to stop the last, last two little gods and possibly die in the process. I mean, I'm in favor of going after the other two. The first two have not necessarily been like particularly difficult to defeat. Uh, the biggest issue has been that they were embodied already. Mm -hmm. And the other two are already disembodied. And they're a little more familiar too. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Do or die, I guess. Let's go do it. Hey, yeah. Are you going to go after death first or war first? Which one was ours? Oh, you guys had war. Was the pig man. Death was the <laughs> necromancer with the death cult. He is weird. Ours was just gross. <laughs> <laughs> ours was a zombified man with a literal pig head, but the pig head was rotting. Yeah, it was ter terrible. Which makes me think maybe we should go after the necromancer one first because then it seems to me he could bring the others back. Since he's death. Yeah. Well now, well, now that you've said that, Brent will absolutely try to do that. Right. <laughs> Probably had not occurred to him until now. Let's go kill death then. Let's do it. Let's destroy death. And yeah. then get some shawarma. <laughs> <laughs> so the demon of death uh, fled across this giant body of water um, let me get the uh, description for it real quick um, okay when you stand on the rocky shoreline and look over the water you see the faint shape of an island or two um, in the distance the uh, water is unnaturally calm and the water stretches beyond your the horizon. Um, the demon of death, ripped from the corpse of the necromancer, fled across this sea. Um, weakened but not yet defeated, you have to track him down and end him before he can lend his power to Edo's plan. So you can see the shore of an island in the distance, but this is a big body of water, and this demon could be anywhere on it. Well, we can see the island, so we can blink to it. We're, we're like blinking fools at this point. Yeah. You could also try a different uh, modified version of that to blink to a place you can't see, but that you know you want to get to. For instance, wherever the demon of death is. Well, I mean, considering that Trix doesn't, is a little still unsure about what his actual powers are we may want to not do that and just kind of pop up in front of them because like we barely fought him it was a more awkward situation of finding him and when we found him it was a very odd short battle like i said with penguins okay so yeah we don't 100 percent know all he can do all right so do you want to roll to blink to the island, or do you want to just hand wave it? Blink for island? Or just hand wave it, because if we blink and fail, we're screwed. But if we just or, hand or wave... Or we're swimming. Yeah. <laughs> also. I say, yeah. We just, I say we just hand wave it to the beach, and we'll go yeah. from there. Yeah, especially Storm the since... Storm the beaches. Yeah. Okay, so hand waves. Although it takes a couple of uh, attempts and some deep focus, 
you get to that island which is just on the edge of the horizon and as you look out it's a taller island and you can see that there's an entire archipelago of these islands ah oh, son of a bitch <laughs> i think we're gonna want all rocky it is just dark and gray and dreary and just m boring monochrome So, um, so we're kind of at, at at an area where we can see all these islands, correct? Right, but I mean, I mean, they stretch for miles. Yeah. Yes. Um, can I investigate a mystery? Yeah. What are you trying to find out, and how? Uh, see if I can see any kind of any landmark, anything that's out of the well, out of the ordinary from the out of the ordinary, obviously. <laughs> um, but that would be an eight. Okay. Um. Given that that's a plus sharp, I'm going to say, as you're sitting there peering, um, you're sitting there looking, and a pair of binoculars are suddenly in your hands. And you're able to look a little bit further, and you see that there is a structure out on one of the far islands. You can't quite tell what it is, but you can tell that it's not just normal, rocky, you know, naturally formed island. Okay. It is just at the edge of what you can see, even with those binoculars. Would I be able to blink there now you that I know would. it's there? However, I would require a roll for it to be in one go with all of you. All right. So there's something all the way out there. We could probably make it. Mm -hmm. Or we can, we could, you know, hop <laughs> all the way across. Yep. I won't make you roll the hop across, but if you want to get there in one go, that's a different thing. I say we just roll it. Who wants to roll it? <laughs> Sorry, what kind of roll is it? Just it's going to be roll. plus weird to blink. So what is your what is your weird, Josh? <laughs> it's a two. Okay. But, but my rolls have been way off. That is also true. These are true <laughs> statements. Just like that. <laughs> that, would, that would be a five. I got a ten. <laughs> okay. So here's what happens. Josh sits there and he reaches out and you feel all of you start to disappear. And you open your eyes and you are underwater. You can't see light. There is one of those fish that has like the glowy thing. Oh, angler fish. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Those things are and terrible. You're realizing, hold on, this pressure is crushing me. And in his panic, Carson teleports you right into the heart of the city. <laughs> so you, uh, you, you swapped places. You were intending to go after death. Instead, Carson saves your lives. You take no damage from that, but now you are in the city. Um, what looked like a warlike. skyline before, you can see now, it is a broken down wasteland. Um, the block you're on looks like it's urban warfare. You've got uh, shattered windows and uh, like eight story buildings, but you look at the next block over and it looks like it's a battlefield from the Civil War. And you look two blocks that way and it looks like it's an ancient, uh, it looks like there's uh, crusaders storming the walls of Jerusalem. This city is a mishmash of every battle through history. <laughs> so did we go where the demon of war is instead? Yep. Nice. I can figure, I understand how to fight him. Except I feel like maybe Fighting will make him stronger. I shouldn't roll things anymore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least it didn't set you back too far. I mean, sure. we still, we were planning on fighting this one anyway, so I feel like all your dice did was uh, just take us to a different... I encourage success in others is what I do. <laughs> That's that's one way to put it, yeah. Yes, that is what I, that's one way to put it. Okay, well, I guess we others, need to investigate. We need to find out. Just because we're here and we see all these different things doesn't mean we know where our opponent is. Mm -hmm. 
Um, while you guys are looking around, just kind of taking it in, a bullet ricochets off the pavement next to you, taking a chip out. Um, oh, we need to take cover. Half a second later, the report of that gunfire uh, hits you. I take off in the opposite direction. <laughs> <laughs> looking for cover. All right. What direction is that? You guys, you find some cover that is relatively safe, where you guys can make whatever, uh, investigate whatever rules you want. Just to warn you, that is what you're facing down is any battlefield you go to, there will be people there trying to kill you. So looking around, I get great rolls. That would be uh, an 11. Okay. Did uh, Charlemagne make an investigate roll as well? No, do you want me to? Yeah, you were, uh, you were talking about it. Go ahead. While you're looking for cover, you can look for... Uh... I have a five. Hold on. Okay. I have a thing that changes my plus. Yes, thank goodness. <laughs> okay, seven. Seven, okay. So... You're both looking around in opposite directions. You're noticing the different battlefields. And um, floating at the top of one of the tallest buildings is what looks like a two-meter greatsword, glowing with the blue-purple light you've come to know as the signature of the demons. However, around the building are barricades. Um, and they are manned. Uh, there's... It looks like it's an old World War II era uh, machine gun is just blasting away down the street as, uh, you know, old style armored carriers are barreling toward it. This is so different because everything that we've fought is something that's essentially the opposite that defeats it. So it's, mm -hmm. so we, if fighting this is only gonna make it worse for us, but I do not what want if, to pull if, a, like a Tiananmen situation. What if we send a bunch of white doves after it? Yeah. Oh no. I throw, yeah, fiery butterflies at it. <laughs> it's so much fire. So much, it's well, it's, I, I, it's my legit, thing. Going, fire is I'm, my thing. I'm going to legit try summoning a bunch a, of doves okay and uh josh can try to send fiery butterflies both of you roll uh oh i was joking oh okay. i'll send butterflies at it oh, I, I rolled a, I rolled a 14 oh god whoa <laughs> literally the highest i can possibly roll like that a <laughs> yep natural 12 okay so oh, that highest would be a 15 yeah the plus well 10. but for but like oh with what you have right now yeah yeah well, um, I, I can't really fault you for that role. Um, <laughs> so you stand there and you throw, lift your hands up like you're throwing a dove into the air. And suddenly, one, five, ten, fifteen doves float up. And as you look, they each have a laurel leaf in their mouth. And they fly up and flutter around this sword. And it hacks them to pieces. But as it does, you can see that it, the light fades and uh, from it with every cut. But you are just filled with terrible sadness as the corpses of these <laughs> tiny doves fall in front of you. <laughs> but you, you do know you can see that it actually worked. So what's <laughs> more peace symbols other than, you know, all of the branches. I got it. A teddy bear that wants a hug. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Literally, I was like, can we just shoot out teddy bears and see what like happens? White flags. Yeah, that's There's more surrender. How does that yeah, have to do? It's ending a war. A hippie. Yeah. Send out a hippie. What's well, the thing? Does anyone <laughs> you know, have the hippies? We could play folk music, you know? <laughs> okay, so I have the weed still. Um, oh. <laughs> let's give it of, some weed. Speaking of hippies, oh, that good, good. I have the good, good, and the good, good brings on like a feeling of like serenity and peace. 
Oh, see, that one sounds like a good. euphoric feeling. Okay, go for it. Okay, so I'm going to first multiply because I'm I don't realize know how much I actually have. I probably have like five or ten of them on okay. me. So I want to multiply the amount I have, and then just yeet them. <laughs> but they need to be on fire. So I'm gonna fire them and then yeet them to him. Okay, go for <laughs> it. <laughs> Roll it. Thing. Roll plus weird. Let's see this sucker. Okay. <laughs> Let's see how this unfolds. Oh, it does not unfold well. What'd you get? I rolled a five. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm. I know, even with helping, I. You have a luck. Five. Yeah. What's your luck like? Uh, do, do I regain luck from if I used it last time? Well, I don't know. How, how many luck did you give? Give them. I only uh, gave I did one luck. Set a limit. You, what was that? I didn't only, set the. I didn't give them any less. I should have because I didn't think about the fact that we're only running two sessions. Okay, because I only gave them one luck, so ah. like, they used it. So give yeah, it regenerated one luck for you. You have one luck. Yeah. Go for you it. Luck. I'm using my luck. Okay. <laughs> That's one place we weren't on the same page. Yeah. Um, okay, you use your luck. It could have been a lot of fun if you hadn't, but it's still fun regardless. So you multiply it. You throw it up, you light it, and as it, uh, as you do, this is a supernatural kind of weed. Yeah. And it <laughs> floats down and descends across the entire city. And as it falls, you hear the battles stopping. The swords stop hitting each other. The guns stop going off. And people just start laughing and crying and just... I mean, it, it suddenly just the most chaotic piece ever. <laughs> um, and you're feeling it too, because yep, now it's not as strong because you're roll. the caster. Yep, What's everyone that? Everyone roll a cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay. there's, a, uh, there's a custom what? move involved with this. Uh, what happens? Okay. So everyone has to roll their cool. Go ahead. I maxed out uh, my experience. I don't ahead. remember what I'm supposed to do after that. Oh, uh, you gain an improvement. So you look at the improvements on the back of your okay. playbook and you get to choose one. Cool, 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 cool. So everyone roll plus cool. I have an 11. 11, you're good, I'm imagining. Yep. Got a seven. So you're a little tipsy. You're like, oh, and you take uh, minus one ongoing until you're outside of the effects. So once you leave the city, you'll be good, but. <laughs> I, I got, got nine. Nine, so the same with us, minus one ongoing until you're outside of the effects. Basically, you're just real high and enjoying life. Pretty much. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. You yeah, buddy. <laughs> you buddy. It was either that or being knocked out, so being high is much better. Knocked right. out knocked out, and minus one harm, because that was – so what you don't know, because you guys didn't investigate, and Don kept taking up a lot of time, was that Don we – Don kept on exploding things. <laughs> that we would also take some of the energy from those people. So when they would get knocked out, some of that energy would be taken as well. So it was kind of sucking, but, it, you know, obviously those initial islands, you don't want people dying all the time. So that's how that the energy came from those ones and everyone, that's how you get, draw people in and keep people there is make them feel good. So just so you're aware by doing that, you negated the primary means of damaging you that the demon of war had. He had all these warrior thralls. He was going to start throwing at you <laughs> and you just caused peace across the city. So if we just, casually walk over there we can yeah nobody's just gonna to get blink closer there. if we need to or that's true we can just blink there <laughs> yeah. um but when you do that war is going to descend he's going to say you stop the beautiful battles so he's going to be pissed I'll no matter what you. we do no <laughs> man what if i summon a sheath around the sword nice oh, yeah. oh go for it man that is an excellent idea. I can I see I this do. so clearly. What's that? I can imagine this so well. <laughs> <laughs> I got a 10. <laughs> As he's coming down, cursing you, and, you know, 
he turns ready to just cleave you. I mean, he's a two meter long sword and he's just about to hack into you guys. A sheath materializes around the blade and he screams and it falls to the ground and it's now just a two meter long metal sword completely devoid of any magic or life. <laughs> Wait. Guys, you have decimated these things. I mean... <laughs> Teamwork. Yeah. Creative <laughs> thinking. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So it far... Also helps that you haven't failed at the times when they are ready to attack you. <laughs> I mean, and honestly, we kept solving these situations with, you know, social, social justice reforms, <laughs> in, in my opinion. So, like... <laughs> <laughs> we did some bleach. We did some watermelons. <laughs> bit off some people's heads. Oh man, we and just decriminalized we weed. Some weed. Like, we did some weed. Gee, yeah. man, no, it's we so legalize. funny because <laughs> I was thinking, you know, what we should do is send a mist of something calming and relaxing. I forgot about your stuff. I Got had you. the good, good guys. <laughs> no, you know, the last time that like somebody like did a mist and everything, you got Miranda and then Serenity. Like that was the movie about it. Like everyone went oh. weird and became like Reavers. Just That's make it simple. Smoke some weed. <laughs> <laughs> Give your populace weed and everyone's happy. <laughs> so, but and now we have to figure everybody out. Everybody screams and then everybody wants to love each other. True. <laughs> Solves a little PTSD for those who are traumatized. I like this. Yeah. Hey, so how do we get to the other one? I don't, we don't even know where we are. Yeah. yeah, we're in the midst of this city. I guess we could go back to that crossroads again. We do know where it is. I think, I would think. You are capable of blinking there. You're familiar enough with it. Yeah, that's what I was I should not to roll because I don't know which way it is. I think in this case, could we, could we ask our GM just to go? Yep. Hand waviness. Not... You are back on the island where you started. Your minus one is gone. Ooh. Those of you who were higher like, are coming down and saying, No! <laughs> <laughs> Trix never liked being high. She didn't like it when she was there the first time. She doesn't <laughs> like it now. Okay, that's fair. Quite glad. <laughs> Hey. Josh was a college boy. He really liked it. <laughs> Let's go get some death. Again. Again. So who's going to roll to blink to that uh that structure this time? Not Josh. Here, I'll do it. <laughs> no. Oh. Give me your dice. <laughs> no, Josh. <laughs> okay, who's rolling it? Uh, I'm scared. <laughs> I will try to roll it. Let's see how it goes. Okay. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, I did good. Um, <laughs> I rolled a ten. I rolled a nine, but plus two weird, so I rolled an eleven. Perfect. You guys appear, and it is this massive castle. And you've got gargoyles and a big old uh, gate with the portcullis. The, the whole like nine yards. You're looking at the stereotypical, this is where the bad guy lives castle. <laughs> and at the top there is a flag and it has a giant fanged skull on it. <laughs> Did your thing have a fanged skull on it? And he, as he turns to you, Trix. Oh, uh, <laughs> like, there was a was like, lighthouse Who's behind you. <laughs> huh? There was a lighthouse. Huh? I don't remember My anything. Skulls. skulls. This death guy has some like issues. Yeah, he he was murdering people for sure. And hey. as you guys are talking, a booming voice uh, emerges from the castle and it says, "I, the greatest of the demons of uh, the apocalypse." was imprisoned inside a puny, weak human. This was a travesty. We are here for the Holy Grail. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not quoting that movie. 
<laughs> Although, yes, she did smell of elderberry. <laughs> My mother is a I nice woman. Leave her alone. <laughs> All right. I mean, to fight death, it has to be life. Things that grow. You saw that plant or was that the weed that plant was the weed that was the weed okay yeah. just making sure i and he used it for bad things i don't think it would be good to use it against him okay cool so it's gone now we don't have to worry yeah about it. we don't have to worry about that i <laughs> multiplied it and exploded all of it <laughs> oh god are we gonna have to have somebody give birth <laughs> in order to we can grow death? something i'm gonna say this is gonna be a nine month process <laughs> So. Yeah, no, we can will we're things in the here. World. Yeah, we can well, will things here. Why don't we do that with maybe vegetation instead of humans? That's all. Right? Awesome. Let's grow. Well, hey, we grow some things flowers in, person, in this world. We can have guys be the bir- be ones who. Carson. I was just gonna say uh, Carson will offer himself up to um, give birth. <laughs> so we're gonna do a fairly odd parents type of situation. The male, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the ones giving. So birth. I mean. We have things like healing magics, but those uh, those don't oh, necessarily. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's that's something I just took on my level up. It's a it's a uh, a move called this might sting. Ooh. Oh, is it like it's called? You can use magic to heal three harm, but the process is exceptionally painful. <laughs> on a seven to nine, it leaves a gnarly scar. Nice. I mean. Well, I cause heal on a zombie. <laughs> I cast heal on a zombie. <laughs> we have, we don't know where where he is yet. Oh, I know. I'm just you're, saying I can. You're standing outside the portcullis. It is uh, halfway up. The big heavy oak doors are currently closed, and you have no idea what's behind them. So we probably I- need to investigate that mystery. You guys go. Uh... See if there's alternate ways in. I'm going to knock on the door. No, don't do those things. No, I thought you were stopped doing that. You didn't feel the same motivation to be that way after we... I'm a distraction. (sighs) This is literally death. Let's just find out. There might even be another way in. he He and I have a conversation going. We have a conversation going. We're right here. We're right here. You and who? Me and Death. How do you, Death is, we don't... You know what? I killed my family. He and I have a, have a thing. I killed my dad. <sighs> I we was more all... recent. Oh, okay, that's true. That's true. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord. Like, my, my killing my family is way more recent than yours. It's more valid. <laughs> <laughs> you were doing your father is not going to be the same. Okay, just get over it. Yours is a scar, mine's a scab, okay? <laughs> okay, so I think I want to um read a bad situation. Okay, good idea. Yeah, and with my stuff I can use plus um tough. Is it tough tough or cool? I keep losing it on my thing. <laughs> plus cool use... instead of plus sharp, which is good for me. Okay. That's why I... Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so 8 plus 2, it's a 10. Nice. Do you want to ask questions or do you want me to free format? Well, I have at least one that I want to ask, and that okay. is... Um, uh, what's my best way in? Okay. Your best way in is not through any of the gates on the ground floor. It's to... Uh, Utilize the abilities you've learned in this place. Cool, cool. Blink. Yeah, for example. We've been blinking everywhere. We've gotten pretty good at that. Anyway, and then another one is, what are, are there any dangers that we haven't noticed? Yes, the uh, courtyard, as you listen at the door, you hear what looks like, what sounds like bones rattling and armor and weapons. There is an army of undead skeleton warriors inside. Nice. And then um, I think I'll free form the last question. Okay. Um, the demon of death does not expect... He, he has a very low opinion of humanity. They are dying all the time. So he doesn't actually expect that you've figured out any tricks that 
this world offers. And so he will not be expecting you to use them. Okay. So we're going to blink like crazy and maybe just like start growing. A f we could probably try to grow a forest because that's bringing life into stuff. That's what I was saying. Grow something around, especially because yeah. the first floor is not a place for us to go in anyway. Build a castle with newborn babies. <laughs> not Top that. No, I wasn't saying there's that. other oh, life, okay. man. <laughs> newborn <laughs> babies. <laughs> freaking <laughs> flowers. What? Yeah. I was just asking if Carson was planning to investigate. Thomas mentioned it a little bit ago. Yeah, I wasn't sure if that was still the intent or whether... Got an 11. Okay. Do you want to ask any questions? Uh, I can just freeform it. Okay. Um, basically, as you're looking at it, you, you know that you're on the right track. Things that, are, that bring life. But death doesn't care so much about plants or those kind of things. Uh, he's only really concerned with collecting uh, at the souls of people and, you know, escorting them uh, to their new owners. Um, so he will, he could be harmed by uh, items or magics that restore health, wellness, or life. Um, mechanically, that means basically the amount of health that would normally be restored will deal that amount of harm instead. Okay. Cool. So cast Kiraga on a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> so we just need to find him. When we find him, I think, especially between Josh and I, we have lots of just inherent abilities to heal. And then, of course, there's all the special rules. Yep. <laughs> so we need to find him. We just still need to get in. Yes. Assuming so maybe, he's in there. Maybe we can grow... Well, you said there's skeleton warriors right outside the gate. Right on the other side of the the doors from you, yeah. Yeah. So Are there can any... we just... Sorry, go ahead. No, that's fine. I was going to say, can we just blink our way into the building passing by them or no? You can't see in there. So oh, so we can't go there. Blink. Could we... Uh, do you, are there any skeletons up on the... On the walkways above? Um, not that you see. All right. I'm going to try to blink up there. <laughs> okay. Roll it. Are any oh, of you no. going with him? That would be a seven. No? Carson? Charlemagne I'll going go. with him? I'll go with him. Okay. Carson and, um, and Josh blink to the top of the the crinals, and you, uh, as you get up there, you are trying to occupy the same space as a skeleton archer who's hiding behind the crenellation, and you knock him into the courtyard where he just falls and shatters. Unfortunately, that drew the attention of all the other and undead. You see this shit, Carson? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Be better at blinking. <laughs> you were the one who came along. I was fine until you did. <laughs> I blink first, so, and you got you take us to a city. I blink again. You knock over a skeleton. I'm pretty sure you're the uh, you're the you know the variable here, not me. So they are are they on like yeah. a balcony? True story. Uh, so the walls the are like uh, seven eight feet uh, thick, with a walkway over the top. There are the crenellations, which are the the parts where you uh, they hide out. behind them. And so there are archers stationed along the top of the wall, and then there are a whole bunch of uh, just like swordsmen in, you know, skeleton swordsmen in the courtyard. There are stairways leading up to the top of the tower or up to the wall of the fortress, and they are starting to climb those stairs. However, all attention is off of Trix and Char uh, Charlemagne. Okay. Oh, go, go, go. Go where? I don't know. I was going to try to help you guys and try to like use some of alternate world magic and try to grow like vines to try to rip apart the skeletons. Yeah, so like from underneath them it just... Yeah, just kind of goes up and then rips them. And it hopefully will help Josh and Carson in the long run. Okay, roll it plus magic. Okay. 
or weird is what the phrase is. Okay, so I rolled a nine, and there'll be plus twos. So I rolled an eleven. Nice. nice. Okay, so you summon Will from beneath, and you push your fingers up like vines, and you see, uh, well, you don't see, those two see vines reaching up from inside the, um, inside the courtyard, and they start clambering over skeletons and gripping the bones and holding them in place, and it goes up and up and up and grips all of them. None of them are hurt, but they're all immobilized for the time being. Thank you. So I think that maybe we all need to be in the same place. I mean, they're immobilized, but we all want to go in the same place, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. At this point, we, we have learned not to split the party. <laughs> we did yeah, do it Carson. once, and we were all very nervous. <laughs> so so what do you think, Trix? Should we just go up there with them? Yeah, we should try to help them. Yeah, because so everything's can... immobilized, so we can just all head on in. Yeah. Okay, so you open the doors and walk past, and you're, you know, you're having to step over a vine here and clamber around a skeleton arm, and they're sitting there snapping at you, but they can't move any of their arms or legs. <laughs> so you, you get up there, and you look, and inside the keep, you see a blue-purple glow, and the demon of death emerges from a window. It's a meter tall, floating, disembodied skull with fangs. And he curses you, and as he does, you watch the vines start to wither. Oh. I mean, I'm just going to not even hesitate. I'm going to cast a uh, first aid. Is that, a, is that a spell on for you, so, or is that just Yeah, a I'm a medic, so I have a first aid, so... Um... It'll be a roll plus cool. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I, I guess my only question was if we were close, if you were close enough to actually apply bandages and. Well, it's I have a lot of different things I can do with it. So it's bandages, but um, I mean, it can be anything like how I threw the burn cream okay. on Josh, things like that. Sure. Yeah. So you're just uh, splashing him with some antiseptic. <laughs> right. Yeah. I've got like some Bactine. I'm like, shh, shh. Yeah, so I got a, I got a nine plus two, eleven. Okay. Power of Johnson and Johnson compels you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a family uh, company. <laughs> okay. What was what that? What does first aid do on an eleven? What was that? What does what first aid do on an oh, eleven? Oh, on eleven, um, heal of two. Okay. So, you use up your entire bottle of uh, anti-inflammatory uh, antibacterial spray, and it just coats the skull, and it shakes, and it sprays off. But you can see that where it touched it, um, the glow has faded. Um, I'm going to try and cast and I, this, the spell that, that, that we discovered earlier. Okay used to heal Charlemagne when she um, got split in half. Oh, yeah, that was <laughs> I got a 10. <laughs> okay. So you'll deal more harm. Um, and this time, you notice that um, suddenly that skull disappears. And down in the courtyard, below you, you see that one of the skulls of one of the skeleton soldiers uh, was missing inside his helmet. It was empty. And now there's a blue-purple glow emitting from the, the faceplate of this helmet. You have reattached the skull to the body. Oh. <laughs> Which was part of that original thing, was reattaching the two pieces. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's now contained, right? It's now contained. Inside um, a giant skeleton. Anybody still have some of that watermelon? <laughs> you guys keep um, some of it. But now so it's going to end physical. Had, so now I had head head back out into the courtyard because then I just I just kind of do the Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> <laughs> They're moving so fast. Why are you moving so fast? I know that was crazy. 
That would be an 11. No. Gosh, yes. now you guys are rolling well. No <laughs> kidding. Uh, and on an 11, I heal three harm with my that stings. That also hurts even more. <laughs> okay. As you do that, the demon of death screams and rips his arm free of the vines that have now, uh, I mean, they're clearly dead. It's just vines are still strong even when they're dead. But I mean, this is a huge skeleton. So he rips his arm free and it has a mace that is enormous. <laughs> oh, and he lumbers I didn't him, think this through. <laughs> kicking the, his soldiers out of the way. And as he kicks, some of them are freed. Others are destroyed. But you're now facing down the demon of death in a suit of armor with a massive mace. Hmm. Now I can't do I can't hurt you unless you fail. So if you guys keep it this rate, you're gonna do well. Okay, so you said plants don't hurt him, nope. but can healing type plants hurt him? Um Presumably, like if I yeah. grow a big behind aloe vera plant. And like some garlic, you know, with that anti like antibiotic characteristic. Yeah. Some, will some willow bark. Yeah, oh yeah, that pain relief. Grow all of the good ones. <laughs> just just, just you know? kind of grab some aspirin. <laughs> just like <laughs> crumble it all over, over them. Okay. Oh, like a vaccine. Um, just like aspirin conjure up aspirin and then like crush it up and get the salt salt chef to do this, you know. <laughs> I would say use magic to grow an aloe vera plant. We'll see how it works. Okay, let's see. Hopefully it's not suck. Oh, it didn't suck. That's good. So I rolled a seven plus two for weirds. So I rolled a nine. Okay. So as he swings his mace down toward you, you grow this aloe vera plant, and it's just massive, and his mace crushes it pulverizing all of that flesh and splattering it back on himself, dealing harm to him. However, uh, it also gets in your eyes. Oh. And so you, you are blinded for two rounds, or for two actions. So the next two things you do, you'll get a minus two to whatever you roll. Oh, good. That's fun. Because you are completely disoriented. Cool. It doesn't burn. It's just it's in your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> It's not I mean, entirely pleasant. I feel like I can just do what I, do. I. I mean, I used up the back team, but I've still got like sunscreen. I've got, I've got so many things. You, this is a day of aerosol, you know. <laughs> I can, I can spray some more stuff on them. Okay, <laughs> do it. Uh, oh ho! I got a thirteen. Come on, guys! I, I'm not cold. even. Eh, plus two. God. <laughs> okay. So you got a 13. <laughs> so really, too really hard. Well what it matters. <laughs> so it's still just a, a two. I think it should be more if it's that high, but whatever, you know. Well, you, it, I, I'll, uh, I'll give it to you. <laughs> um, so as you spray him, you, you get closer and get closer. And you grab out, you grab a, a big old roll of gauze and you wind it around his arms and his torso. <laughs> <laughs> and as you do, he's screaming, no, no, the life. Ah! It's like steaming. <laughs> yeah. It's a little I'm Star no wars <laughs> <laughs> And he falls <laughs> down and the helmet falls off and you see... Uh, that in in the place of the glowing skull is now just a really desiccated corpse. Yeah. And it looks like it was the corpse of a giant vampire. Sunscreen. That interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. So you is it all four demons? And at this point, uh, the world around you disappears. The, um, the skeletons that were uh, approaching you had fallen over, but before they could even touch the ground, you are in a black, formless void. 
Oh no, because where's Charles? Who's going to send us home? <laughs> and um, the a deep, resounding voice that seems to come like even from inside you roars in rage, says, you stopped me from fulfilling my plans and from getting my revenge. I may not have been able to kill the rest of humanity, but I can still kill you. Want to bet? The face of a of the djinn, Edo, uh, appears before you. Uh, and it, at first it's almost translucent, and then it resolves into what each of you think of as almost a stereotypical bad guy genie. <laughs> Jafar, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought of, but I mean, it's it's whatever each of you uh, think of. Um, his appearance is entirely dependent on your character's experience um, and perceptions. And as he's speaking, you start feeling your heart slow down. And it's painful, and you feel like you're going to explode. You each have a chance to say something or do something to uh, try to resolve, try to stop this from happening. I yell out. When he said that, I, I yelled out, want to bet? Because <laughs> <laughs> he's got a gambling problem. <laughs> okay. It takes him a second to, to process that. He says, oh yeah, what would you... What would you, a puny mortal, have to offer? Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I don't know. But I can't think when my head's about to explode. He eases up just a smidge. Oh. And as he does... You all fall to your uh, to your knees or to your back. However, you collapse to the ground um, on a floating platform in this void. Uh, I'd like to read a bad situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> That's not a good thing. Ooh, nice. Uh, that would be an, an eleven. <laughs> okay. Um, Edo is a gambler. The problem is you have to give him something that he might think is worth taking this risk. He's already lost his freedom. He's already lost his, re uh, his revenge against the world. So what could you promise him that if he won would be good enough? Um, I'll take a spot. For ideas, um, there are things like your, uh, you volunteer to uh, just sacrifice your lives. So basically, he can kill you and torture you for as long as he can keep you alive, even after he's in the lamp. He'd be willing to do that or spare you if, he, if you, uh, you win. Uh, he would accept a wager of you could free him after he is imprisoned and he would spare you. You could um, promise to work against Charles and try to bring Charles down. You would accept that. Speaking of Charles, I'm gonna summon him. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, preemptively rolled and I got a 12. Okay. So here's the thing, uh, because they are about of equal power and rank, he, uh, Charles cannot invade Edo's uh, pocket dimension without permission. Okay. So you get the sense that he's waiting just outside, but he hasn't been given permission to enter. So he heard you, he just can't quite get there. So where are we? If he's a djinn, are we inside his... We're in, you're inside his pocket dimension. Basically, it's a place outside of space and time that he can use. He has not yet been captured, so he's not inside a, a vessel of any kind. Okay. So, 
that's going to be his punishment, his forfeit, since he can't pay his debt. Who was the person who said that they were going to switch places with Ado? I did. Okay. okay. So you offered to switch places. I didn't catch that. Sorry. Yeah. Um, that is a but, you would. But if I do switch places with you, uh-huh. you have to leave humanity alone. And he says, oh, that is, that's you win either way. I, How does uh, he win? <laughs> he gave up on humanity. He's been walking around not caring. Yeah. Essentially, it's a, no, if, I, if, if I'm out, I'm getting my revenge. Oh, hey, okay. It's not us you have to get revenge on there, buddy. Oh, all of humanity is my scapegoat. <laughs> I'll, I'll, Charles will get his eventually. You know, Charles is right outside. He's Just right let here. him in. Hold a little conversation with them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Have a little chitty chat. Okay, he'll let Charles in. That's not a problem for him. Uh, before he lets him in, can I figure out why they don't like each other? Um, sure. Yeah, you can do a investigate a mystery. Just kind of intuit that yeah Uh, i don't know that they don't like each other i think they just keep wanting the same thing to be jerks Mm -hmm. (laughs) um what is it plus plus sharp plus sharp i rolled a 13 (laughs) (laughs) we learn all the things (laughs) dice all right so what you're able to determine and you just kind of got the sense and you've pieced it together through the course of things. They actually really hate each other. The big thing here is that um, Edo, the djinn, has been gambling forever. And he's been <clears throat> manipulating and using humanity as his chits for as long as humanity's been around. Um, Charles, on the other hand, actually kind of likes humanity. He's willing to, you know, use them for his own ends, but he's not out to get anybody. And so he actually feels like he's doing humanity a service by getting rid of Edo. So they are actually opposed in aim. Um, The fact that he's willing to use unsavory methods like this, potentially risking the entire human um, population to do it, is not great, but he actually believe uh, Charles actually believes he's doing it for the good of humanity. So it's kind of the difference between like uh, regular raised uh, beef and grass fed beef. <laughs> yeah, we're still beef. <laughs> One of us is treating us a little better. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, he's still gonna butcher you and eat you. It, it's just a matter of <laughs> you know. He's not gonna do it. How much you enjoy life until then? Yeah. <laughs> wonderful gotta love that we're in the middle of this <laughs> it's very much so fun so yeah they are definitely opponents um, and it's just it's a long standing rivalry I mean the Charles is here now right so whatever yeah, Carson did. wanted to talk to him about he maybe could yeah, I mean, he could chat. chat. I mean, Ado's going to hear everything. It is his pocket dimension. Oh, I just wanted Charles to, to send us away from here, but it don't, seems like he doesn't have that power. No, it, it's not his dimension, and uh, interfering right now, again, would until uh, Ado's deadline passes, Charles can't do anything against him. Nope. He has to give him every chance to pay the debt, even if he knows he can't. Okay. So I guess uh, I'd like to read a bad situation. Yeah. It's lost it. Eight. Okay. So one. Um, I just what's the best way out? The best way out is to win a wager against Ado. All In right. Fact, that that's just about the only way out. He will kill you if you don't bet against him and win. Okay. okay. And it's a game of your choice. He'll let you choose the game. So we can play like hopscotch. 
you could play hopscotch. Um, however, it's, it's more a game of chance than anything that he's looking for. And quite frankly, do you want to play hopscotch against a god? <laughs> I don't know. He may. Well, I don't know. He seems like he's unsettled. He may not be able to understand the game. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess we're down to like a roll of dice or rock, paper, scissors. Roll of dice. You could play blackjack. You could do five card stud. I mean, you, you choose the game. Um, Dang. Those of you who have, uh, so all of you have, uh, I'll say, one luck you can expend in this situation to twist the odds in your favor. You're not allowed to cheat, but, you know, fate does f smile on you somewhat. I mean, you did defeat hey. four demons today. That, that's pretty good. I, th I think karma is a, is a little bit in your favor. So can, I mean, can we, so let's say I choose to act under pressure and roll against him, roll dice. Okay, yeah. Okay. So what are you going to wager? I mean, I guess I have to wager myself. The only thing I have is myself. So this is the group as one. So he is making one wager with all of you. Okay. So let me tell you guys something. I, I have a special thing that gives me plus three on top of my plus two if I act under pressure. It's just for every one that I, every plus, okay, so I can do up to plus three, the keeper will hold up to three for me. So in a future situation, it could be used against me. However, I feel like we're kind of like at this point. <laughs> yeah, we're, 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 we've hit the mark where yeah, the all end. the things need to be used. Right, so I essentially get plus five on my uh, roll under act under pressure. I say go for it. Okay, so but we're wagering all of our souls at this point. Okay, against what? What does he get if he wins? What does he get other than our souls? Other than your souls. His dead is He's paid? got those already. He owns those as far as he's concerned because he can kill you at, at a whim. Can we say his debt is paid then? We'll take it. I thought we were going to take his place in the. Um, as yeah, we could do that. Do, hold on, we hold take on. do not place? bet that. You would let him loose against all of humanity? Do you have something yeah. that you Charles, offer? Charles, Charles. Do you have a better idea, Charles? Charles, here's the thing that's, that's a you problem, not <laughs> an our problem. You just say, you just went to all this trouble to save humanity and you're going to let him loose? Uh, well, you know, he was loose before. No, Charles, I mean, the question is then, what's your, what's your solution then? Let him torture you for eternity if you mm. lose. I mean, at least the other people are safe, right? Mm. I feel Heresy. like you want us to be tortured. He is, uh, he's out for himself in this, because if Edo gets out of this, then all of this work he put in, ends up being for nothing. So while he still claims the souls, Edo is still free to uh, seek revenge at another point. I don't know. What do you guys... Yeah, yeah I'm going to release him. I'm going to take his place, Charles. So unless you can give me a better deal, uh, I'm just going to do that. Yeah. You're the one who got us into this. Literally, you are. <laughs> so I, I can't interfere with this deal. <laughs> and he's super frustrated. So it's coming down to a roll of dice. Guess we're there. Oh, I think it's one of the good. I think, how about this? How about we do a Monty Hall problem? Not familiar. Well, I have three doors. Behind uh, two of the doors is our goats. <laughs> Behind the third door is your freedom. <laughs> you get to choose a door and I'll open a door that has a goat and then you get a free right. choice okay. I'm good with that or we can just go with the roll of the dice we can roll the dice we can go with I that problem comfortable with the roll of the dice but now just as a note this is a straight roll no bonuses nothing because it is pure chance whether you win or not 
luck can skew things in your favor somewhat, but mine statistics. So... <laughs> Yours is statistics. I don't know. Everything seems like a bad answer. I think it's that's all the point. a bad answer. <laughs> <laughs> This is the problem when you gamble. That's why I don't gamble. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh huh. <laughs> now, here's the thing if you guys just say, I'm not making this deal, sure, your characters die, but you saved the world. No. No. <laughs> I want to live. Mm hmm. Yeah, so after everything. Like, yeah, no one's gonna, like, if we die, no one's gonna know that we just did all those great things for the humanity. It's yeah, sad. they never know. Nope. Yeah. yeah. So you can do high card, you can do, I mean, roll of the dice. Whatever. I'm, I'm equipped for a lot of different uh, situations here. We can do that, uh, what Robert suggested, which, I mean, does skew things in your favor given statistics, but... Do you want to do statistics? Yeah, at this point, we're at the end, no <laughs> matter what. This is the end, yeah. Yeah. I don't know that it matters what we choose, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Because there's That's a big the consequence no matter what. Because there's still frickin' Charles who gets to walk there's around Charles. with Charles. He's a yep. jerk. <laughs> I'm good with either one. So yeah, one me too. I don't know how you're going to do the one Robert was talking about. How would you do it? I have notepad that I can put up to the camera. Or Robert has a, has a thing right here. He has a oh, thingamajig. Wow. I have a thingamajig. Can everyone see that? Yes. Yeah. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mommy Hall's problem. Oh, crap. <laughs> Behind <laughs> these doors are two goats and the prize. The prize being, and I conjured this up in, in, in your little area because, well, I decided you, you've you given me the ability to do this. Yes. Is is, is there your freedom, Ido? <laughs> so, pick a door, left, middle, or right. <laughs> Ooh. Uh oh. So. Now, I was thinking you guys would be choosing the doors. Oh, no, no. This is for oh. your freedom, Mato. Not for <laughs> Either way, we're going to die, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is on you. So he will select the right. Oh, the right one. Okay, look at that. The goat is in the middle. Now you have a free choice there, Brent. Uh, sorry, well, Mato. got to switch to the left. Are you going to switch? Oh, yeah. Are you sure about that? Oh, it's the statistically... Uh, Let's make a deal. deal. All right, everyone. Kiss your butts. Ready? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so we all die. <laughs> we well, all I, die. I, he gets well, no, I, I take over your slot. So. <laughs> you take over your slot? I took. I take over for Edo. I was the one who made the. Oh, made the it's bet all of you. No, it was oh. all of us. Oh no, I was the one making a bet with you. Remember, I was. I said that. He told I, us I, it's for all of us. Yeah, yeah. I did try to clarify that. Oh, so, okay. Given that you didn't understand the terms, would you like to select a door? <laughs> sure. <laughs> but this time, the odds are the weight. The stakes are higher. Oh, is that so? If I let you live, you have to swear to seek vengeance on Mr. Charles Tiggs. Okay. Oh, that's easy. I'm done. Yeah. yeah, sure. He's a jerk. Let me go right now and I'll totally do that. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we don't have to. <laughs> yeah, there's no betting in this in ball. I'll totally do it. And before he leaves, he will grant you each um, a new power from any playbook you wish. Uh, I only have one playbook. Yes. However, since it's the end of things, if you bring these characters into another game, whatever, they now have a free power from any playbook that you did not have to spend an improvement for. Woohoo! And he lets you go. And uh, Charles says, why would you make that promise? <laughs> 
Because the last time I talked to you before I came to this goddamn world, I still had a family. <laughs> oh. Personally, I intend to seek vengeance on both of you. <laughs> I just so, don't like you. Charles, being true to his word, teleports you all back to the real world but in the moment you left it. So Josh oh, no. That's is fine. standing on an, <laughs> at the top of an ancient Mayan temple while the Amazon burns around him. The bodies of my family like piling and just falling down the Amazon temple steps because I had just recently, the reason I asked whether or not I heard uh-huh. uh, or saw what happened to your arm, Charlemagne, was because the last time I heard and saw what happened to them, they had just been taken over. The entire family was coming after me, and I had to essentially explode in fire and kill my family. That's why I had nothing to go back to. We were a family, a hunt, family of hunters. All of us together, we were one big family of hunters. Okay. Trix emerges from the lighthouse... Yeah. And that's been crumbled. It was destroyed. It's been crumbled. It was because destroyed. it was it was belly smashed by a pe- spirit penguin. Yep. Yes, it was. <laughs> you emerge from the rubble where the the portal uh, spits you out, and you see the people you'd left behind, looking real confused about why you just came out of the same portal you entered through less than a second ago. Charlemagne and Carson emerge, and. Uh, see Lucas tending to the uh, the unconscious victims. What a good guy. <laughs> and uh, the world is real messed up now, but at least it's not over. Hey. For no, we have now. all the knowledge now. For now. Dun, 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 dun. This is like Angel. Now there's going to be like five seasons. <laughs> they have a dragon. Yeah. Yeah. So what are we going to do? That was that. I don't know about you, but I'm going to get myself a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, thanks for uh, participating. I know it was a, a little confusing at first and tried to clear things up, but you can only that do so cool. much when you start writing this at midnight. <laughs> well, especially considering two sessions weren't there, so some of the story development wasn't there. So you mm-hmm. had to, you know, fill it in. So it was pretty awesome. I hope it was fun. And it was it quite was. entertaining. I tried to turn up some camp on some of those pieces and still offer some meaningful choices. <laughs> it was pretty cool. You did all of the things. I did. Yeah. Hmm. It's so there's this uh, Robert A. Heinlein book called Job, a comedy of, I think it's just a comedy of errors, but it's about a character named Job, and it's based on the biblical character, mm-hmm. and he keeps getting plucked into different places, and it's this kind of idea that, like, the gods are effing with him, right? It's just a pawn. And anyway, it's a really good book. I read it several times, as frequently as I can, honestly, but this reminded me of that, just like... <laughs> it's really just a game, you know. It's uh, it's actually sitting. That same book is sitting on my bookshelf. I haven't read it yet. I've read oh, other, read it. I haven't read that one. Do it. Yeah. It's worth it, and it's not very long. Okay, I'll uh, I'll take that recommendation. When I uh, wrote up this thing, um, I actually put a. Let me see if I've got it here. Um, I gave I put a quote from uh, Good Omens into the as kind of the foundation. Yeah. It was kind of the idea that sparked this for me. It's the God does not play dice with the universe. He plays an ineffable game of his own devising, which might be compared from the perspective of any of the other players, i.e. everybody, to being involved in an obscure and complex variant of poker in a pitch dark room with blank cards for infinite stakes, with a dealer who won't tell you the rules and who smiles all the time. So Charles. (laughs) So Charles. (laughs) (laughs) Heck yeah. So that, that was kind of the idea. It was meant to be this this game of stakes that's way above your heads, but you're thrust into the middle of it. <laughs> we just have to guess. 
Yeah. That was literally all it was, was guessing on how yeah. to murder different things. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like gambling. Yep. Mm. <laughs> so, guys, thank you. Um, please just email me if you have feedback, things that I could have improved on, things that I did really well. Let me know because it helps me to uh, become a better MC, GM, whatever you want to call it. I think it was um, wonderful. It was very much so fun. <laughs> Personally, I think that whole weed thing was dumb, and whoever thought that, that was like really dumb. Brilliant. Are you kidding? Thanks, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks all. Go ahead and uh, stop recording, Robert. All right.